wonderful, wonderful time. Uh, if not, I hope we can brighten your day. I am on tonight with YouTube's Depression to Expression, Scott St. Marie. Scott, wave your hands. Hey, everyone. Hi. Hey, hey, hey. I don't have the interface. I'm, I'm just seeing you. That's totally but, uh, okay. That's totally okay. I will tell you if somebody is uh, is saying naughty things. I, no, we have moderators. Yes, They'll make sure that everything is set. I So the reason I wanted to go live so quickly, I am going to start our queue, everybody. Exclamation letter Q if you have any questions uh, for Scott. Start posting them up and we will get to them. Uh, we definitely have questions to go through, obviously. This is an interview and I am a prepared interviewer. Come on, guys. Um, but uh, definitely this conversation is not a conversation unless you're part of it. So thank you, thank you everybody who's here. I appreciate Thanks, you. Yay. So the reason I wanted to get you live really quick is because I was about to gush about you. And usually when people are one-on-one -on -one and you give them compliments, they feel all kinds of bad and silly. But <laughs> I put you in front of a bunch of people, so you can't you can't feel bad. I'm just gonna, well, you can, bad. you can feel all kinds of things, but um you have to you, you you have to accept that the compliments are coming at you you are a huge inspiration to me when i oh started my, my channel uh when i started my channel on twitch i had found you because there was like five people talking about mental health at the time in 2016 or 2017 and you were one of them and the video that I stumbled upon was your video where you were talking about the fact that like, why the heck can't people talk about mental health get sponsored? Because I still need toilet paper to wipe my butt even though I have depression. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh my goodness. And that's still a fight today, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it is. It's a, it's a big problem. I can, you, yeah. You started Twitch in 2016? 2017, I, yeah. 2017, yeah. okay. And that's, more for is it for gamers you're doing like everything combined in this in this platform i am a little bit i mean it is more for gamers it's a pretty big kind of misconception so now i've moved over to 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 mixer because i'm trying to i want to pioneer something here there's not a lot of mental health conversations happening as of yet right um so i decided to move to mixer and i'm pretty talk show heavy like the main uh the main thing that i am doing is talk shows oh oh thank you thank you everybody in chat is like turn him up turn him up we can't hear him so fix oh fix, is fix. that my fault yes. i can change no, that that was not your fault that's of course that's my fault okay <laughs> um wait so do you still play i'm actually the worst interviewee because i always deflect questions because i love asking <laughs> questions this i want to learn this is a conversation it's good you can ask okay, me good. i'll ask you you're good you're good that's so much better for me so wait for for twitch did you start with mental health or did you start with video games no the idea was i want to talk about mental health and i see that people are doing it already on youtube and they're doing it really well and also i want to be able so my background is in research and i also felt like there wasn't a space where people could come and ask questions from a peer and and feel like they are getting good information um and so i would research it i still do i research a topic and then that would be the topic of discussion for that day and then people can come in and ask questions and i can provide them with reliable sources and and tell them where to go to get more information and stuff like that and i wanted to be able to do that live i wanted that interaction live and so live is completely different it's yeah. I, I think it's the way to go it's way more real unscripted i think viewers appreciate that too um because if you fuck up am i allowed to swear yeah 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 we're good okay okay if you mess up no if you fuck up then it, it, i don't know it just adds a little more uh uniqueness a little more self-expression i think yeah it's like it's everyone it's so scripted on youtube sometimes and you can cut whenever you want right and you can say something oh i shouldn't have said it that way okay i'll just cut it delete it but this is very raw and i think that's really great what you're doing so oh does this God. mean that you're not a gamer or are you a gamer i wouldn't call myself a ga yeah, gamer I wouldn't call myself a gamer but I don't know if I should be calling myself a gamer you guys tell me audience. well you have the chair I have the, I do have a chair they did you have I, a chair. I have a chair sponsorship see so sitting people with depression do do need to be do need to be seated uh but <laughs> but uh yeah I think I don't know. So they're, they're, the chat is teasing me and they're saying that I'm a gamer. I do. If you basically, if you play games, sometimes you are a gamer. Like if you spend your, if you spend some time 
when you're relaxing gaming like that still counts as a game yes so i guess totally i guess so i don't not game i just don't feel like i do it well which is why i was hesitant to call and what about anything. what about your listeners do they play video games yes well we have so i mean a lot of people who are watching will be people who are watching a gaming stream and then they found me by name by my name on or something like that okay yeah. got it okay yeah. so i have a quiz for you and everyone oh, okay watching. you're not done gonna... okay okay no let, let's see <laughs> i was just playing a video game before here uh jumping on so let's see based on the screen that people will see can they guess the game okay okay all right so mm -hmm. let's just move this welcome to my condo but uh all right i don't know if this will be good enough quality hmm. actually uh, you hey if you're a real gamer you should know that <laughs> wait you is should, that it's it, a pause screen it is a pop wait i'll let people guess before i guess yeah can you guys can you guys Give tell i love video games mentioned luigi's Man that's true i played luigi's mansion last episode that's okay, very true can you see that is it minecraft it is not minecraft it's not it's i don't think it's minecraft but i see the yep, blinking yep. the eight bit you have to think way uh, earlier than Minecraft, actually. So it's a Wii U, so that should provide a bit of insight. Yeah, but does it? Does it? Because it could be a retro <laughs> game on the Wii U, so it's like it's even harder. It wasn't great quality. I won't. I won't. Uh, you know, if people don't guess it, that's okay. Is that's it Dwarf okay. Fortress? Dwarf Fortress. I don't know, but that I don't know that game, but it sounds amazing. <laughs> I Dwarf Fortress. I was going to guess that it's a Zelda game. Yes, yes. You're right. And on the yeah. Wii U, so is it Twilight Princess? It's not, because I think it was it was remade on the Wii U or like put in HD. It was originally on GameCube, I think. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, then, uh, then you lost me because I don't know all of the Wind Waker. No, not Wind Waker. Wind Waker. It is. It is Wind Waker. Oh, it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you were very confident in that. No, no I wasn't. Yeah, it was somebody really. else. <laughs> Soma guessed it. Soma in chat guessed it. Well done. Well done. Yeah, Wind Waker. Amazing game. If you want to have a game that boosts overall contentment and happiness in life, Wind Waker, that's, it's like the brightest Zelda game ever, other than Breath of the Wild. The greens, the yellows, uh, the, the textures, it's like the brightest game ever. I love it. I absolutely love it. Soma Twilight says Princess they was really dark. Twilight Princess is very, very dark comparatively. Yeah, and the themes in it are much darker as well. Totally. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Soma says they have ta uh, a Toon Link tattooed on their arm. So that's that's how they would rec be able to recognize that. Okay. Yeah. So there's there's that. Yes. Triforce. Yay. Very cool. Very Yay. cool. Well, so so in your free time, that, that's something that you do is you game. I do. I wish I did it more, to be okay. honest. Well, nobody has um, enough time to do it more. <laughs> so tr so true. But one thing I'm really working on, and I've been working on for a while now, is not feeling guilty for um, giving myself that time to do things that don't seemingly mm -hmm. add to some agenda or some definition of productivity. Yes. To just simply do something for the sake of doing it with no expectations and no monetary value uh, to that. So that would be watching a movie, gaming. Um, and that's something that I'm like, no, because I could, instead of gaming for an hour, what, oh, I could write a blog. I could, yeah. you know, reach out to people. I could send some more emails. So, yes. and then you get to guilt on. yourself over not that's doing it. those things. As you're and watching the movie, you're like, but I'm not doing this. Yeah. Exactly. So that's a very uh, interesting thing I, I'm working on. So today was a day where I spent an hour. Uh, not quite an hour, but uh, fiddling around with um, with um, Wind Waker. That's yeah. awesome. So yeah, is that, yeah. I feel like every content creator goes through this where people tell them like, hey, you need to be able to take time for yourself in order to create content effectively. And then you go back into your closet and you go, not me. I'm going to be working and productive all the time. And then you burn yourself out. And then you go into the uh into the hmm i should probably work on this and i should probably stop torturing myself does that mm -hmm. sound familiar in any way shape or form that definitely does not necessarily with with content creation because um i've really slowed that down okay. the last the last six months um i had a bit of a revelation i i really think 
again, what you're doing on, on Mixer and what you used to do on Twitch and everything that you do is fantastic because it's very community centric. What you do is the live streams and you chat and have conversations. You don't gotta talk me up. Thank you, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to. I have to. It deflects every all the attention off me. Don't give me. A <laughs> got it. Got it. Got it. All right. I can um, understand that. Yeah, but but uh, so I, I focus more on on the community I've built where we use uh, Discord to mm -hmm. chat and have have you know I, I make videos for that smaller community. So there's less pressure to put myself into the massive public eye like on YouTube. There's less pressure when you do it for a community. Um, so that that makes me feel a lot better. Uh, okay. There's less expectation. There's there's less um, less pressure I put on myself when it's with a smaller community. That's not to say I still don't make YouTube videos because I do. It's definitely less often. There's no reason I need to make three videos a week. It's, there's, right. there's no use, especially um, you know as they're all demonetized anyway so i don't earn a buck from that anyways which right. would be nice if i could hey get a chicken sandwich right. for making videos that take hours and hours right. but um, and emotional the emotional toil and everything that you can't put a price on yeah oh my gosh you cannot put a price on it not to mention depending on the day you're having you read that one too many comments and yep. you're like oh my gosh yep. so you know it's um it's definitely a challenge for creators, right? To to keep that healthy mindset and that growth mindset. But I think I don't throw around the word self care, but I think it's it's wise to take time where there's no tangible like utility to what you're doing. So just go lie down and eat a bag of chips if you need to. Go play some Zelda. You said <laughs> chips, Miss Vicky's or Ruffles. Like just do something for for you and with no expectation based on other people and and just do it for you. The four words, do it for you, right? So what pushed you towards this? Is it the yes. demonetization? Is it the fact that you you know you collected a little bit of a community on YouTube, so you just feel less of a need to be doing that? Is it the YouTube comments that got you to say like, okay, no, I gotta I gotta pull back? What what was it? That's great. Um, I think it's a uh, you know multivariate there so the demonetization doesn't help um it's like no, okay so at the end of the day you gotta eat the chicken sandwich i gotta pay for this small shoebox of a place in toronto and toronto is very very expensive so you know i i don't think i think you you do a bit of both you offer a lot for free but then those who want more you they can pay the a cup of coffee and get a whole bunch of extra content every month um, but I think the big thing was my whole mission was having an honest dialogue about mental health. Right. And, and a dialogue doesn't really happen when you're on YouTube. It happens when you're doing things like you're doing. Compliment number seven. Um, I'm but, happy you're uh, counting because I'm trying to zone them out. So I'm not <laughs> counting. That was a joke. I know. I'm I would kidding. not count I'm kidding. Compliments. I'm kidding. Um, but the, the mission is an honest dialogue about mental health. And the dialogue is it wasn't really happening with me putting out a prepared video and then coming to the comments, reading some, not reading them all, depending on the schedule and not, you know, I respond, but then they don't respond back. So the dialogue doesn't really happen that much with YouTube and especially a lot of creators. If you're getting thousands and thousands and thousands of comments on a video, any creator that does that for a living does not respond. There is no dialogue there. Right. Um, so I, that was the big attraction to do something, um, where the community's smaller, but personally, the impact and satisfaction for me and others is just that much greater. I, I really think it, it was, I think it, it adds more to people's experiences and my own. Do you feel like, do you feel closer to your goal? I guess what is your goal is the first question. And second of all, do you feel closer to your goal doing what you're doing now? I think so. Definitely. Oh my God. Absolutely. Um, having having a conversation one on one like what we're doing now and it sounds weird but having a conversation one on one right now means way more to me and feels way better than having a million views sure it, a, a view is just a number and it's so abstract and while it gives meaning to people who may receive it on the end it's it's not giving me much so something like this the goal was to have that dialogue and conversation and get to the bottom of uh the lifestyle choices and possibly why people are feeling depressed and anxious. Those are the two. I don't get into the, I get into things that I have experience with, which is sure. both of those. I don't touch the, you know, bipolar disorder and schizophrenia and psychosis 
because I really can't speak to those through my experience. So thank you I, for not pulling things out of your butt. That's a, that's a thing some people do, and you don't. So I, I actually that's one of the things that I really respect about you. Oh, Compliment back, ping back yeah, in yeah. your court. This is how we have a conversation. Okay, <laughs> then we're gonna insult each other the next half. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works, you guys. Count yeah, count down yeah, until we yeah. But uh, um, no, I I feel like even if I was a medical professional, then you have some. Uh, you're holding a bit of water with the advice you give. That's but true. even at that, I think there's such a great role for lived experience yes. and where people can really relate and find community in that. So my goal was just to help people find different solutions and tools. And, and what I had done in the past to, to manage depression, I would argue fairly successfully in my own experience. And I wanted to share that with people. And it, and it brings me joy to see people being like, yo, I tried that and I'm feeling pretty good. I, 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 I can't, I got out of bed today. I'm like, yes, that's awesome. That's Way a huge go. step right there. Huge, huge. So that brings me so much joy. And I think I am closer to that goal for sure. Uh, all right. So we have somebody asking, uh, the reason I'm not asking this question, Moop, one of my oldest viewers, and I love you dearly, but the reason I'm not asking this question is because I don't think it's entirely relevant and I was trying to be sneaky about it, but does YouTube still give you revenue on demonetized videos at all? All questions are relevant in a live stream. <gasps> we can't avoid them. We, we can't. can't. No, There's we can't. nowhere to go. <laughs> can't press the end chat button. Um, no, 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 don't go. <laughs> yeah, so you know what's weird? Um, okay, so when you upload a video and, and, and it, it's always approved right away. So you're like, oh, sweet, I'll upload it. Then about seven eight hours later sometimes 24 hours it'll be reviewed by the youtube algorithm and all these bots that go in and check the wording and they'll be like ah there's suicide in there depression or there's the word shit in there so we have to demonetize yeah. and then what you do is you press request review so let me send it to a real person in the youtube headquarters and they can watch it for themselves and then nothing happens <laughs> and then they say no it's still demonetized so it says no or limited ads will be shown on this video and you can't press the slider button anymore what that means is i have no power anymore uh -huh. so maybe an ad will be shown maybe it won't maybe i'll get 30 cents or maybe i'll get zero dollars so it's not like oh I just missed out on eight thousand dollars. Oh, video. you're so missing out on pennies. Can you can you get YouTube Premium? Is the question because that's the pay subscription service. I guess it's the equivalent. Like Mixer also has like a pay subscription service. That's awesome. Do yeah. Yeah. For sure. Although my channel got a strike for the first time ever, what? so I can't. Yeah. yeah, it got a strike. Be why did it get a strike? Oh, because I I did a video on uh, CBD oil. No. That's yeah, and they're like, you can't promote drugs. I'm like, but this is, but this is not even a drug. It's over the counter, and it's not even an FDA. It, oh my god, it was crazy. <sighs> and I can, um, so that's so frustrating, dude. And I can say crazy because I'm a crazy man. <laughs> um, but but um, no, it's so for YouTube Premium. Yeah, you have. That's how creators will get money. It's like $5 a month, and then you can support creators that way. But that feature is now blocked until next year because my channel has a strike. Isn't that fun? Oh, that's so, this is great. This is all Isn't kinds of ways in which your freedom of speech can be banished because YouTube oh, needs all the money. Not a little bit of money, money, but all of the money. And it's so strange. And I'd love to, to pick your brain on how Mixer works, but yeah, I feel go. if YouTube keeps this up, there just there has to be another platform that will take it over because this is this is what i love about about tech it's like people are always trying to eat you up and and you have to stay on your toes to make sure you have the best product imaginable because right. someone is in their in their basement right now thinking up something amazing so youtube really has to change how they're treating creators and what they're doing but more with smaller creators like myself like that's what you have to focus on right is people right. putting out like hard content too there's people with like a few hundred subscribers but they're uploading like every day with some really good stuff right 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 right. really right. good stuff right. and they're not getting noticed and they're not getting monetized and it's just 
So how does Mixer work in all of this? So, so how much money do you make every day? Huh? Okay, so exactly one dollar. No, uh, but in all seriousness, I make money yeah. right now through Patreon because I'm not monetized through Mixer yet. You have to get to a certain level. And I actually got my email that I'm going to start getting monetized uh, today. And I filled every like literally today earlier like three hours. Congratulations, ago. Uh, that's amazing. Thank you, thank you. Um, so uh, and I, because I was moving over from so I'm sorry if you hear mooing, that's my dog. My dog is making mooing noises. <laughs> so Half very cow. Sad. Yes, part cow. Um, but yeah, so uh, you in order to be partnered on Mixer, you have to get to another level, and they just open open monetization. But that's people can give you embers, which are equivalent. <laughs> to uh to money but not exactly money it's like not an ex so like somebody pays let's say fifteen dollars to get ten dollars worth of money to give you so like God. they're they're sponsoring the platform but also giving you money that way okay uh, uh, that's how um twitch worked that's also how, no, that's how uh, twitch works yeah what was the what was the street the big streaming one it was called uh oh my gosh not like a bunch twitch? of youtubers no no not twitch the other streaming D -Live? one nope Caffeine? It was, no, I think it was you in it. You, you stream? You, oh, I no. don't know about that one. Oh, oh my gosh. You play? Oh Help us out, chat. Chat's trying. Oh, Chat's oh, trying. Oh, man, what the heck was it? Streaming? It, it was it, it was like almost connected to to YouTube. Got to look it up. Keyboard? That but, means I'm a gamer. <laughs> But we can, and we can talk about all this in detail because I can't imagine somebody rewatching this is like, and then they talked about monetization for 40 minutes. Yeah. But I do want to like answer all of your questions and get you on Mixer. The only difference, the big thing about Mixer that I, Mixer, Twitch, about all these live platforms, uh, the expectation is that you're on a lot longer, right? If on YouTube, you might be recording for two hours and uploading 10 minutes worth of footage on Twitch or Mixer, the algorithm favors you the longer you stay on. You're more discoverable and everything. So that's Got why it. people play games because gaming in general takes quite a bit of time. So as you're playing the game, people are watching you experience the game and that naturally lends itself to longer content. But Whoa. something, right? But something like a talk show, I've talked to people for two hours and people really open up in that time. And like, absolutely. We've, the longest show we've had was three and it was phenomenal. Like Unreal. you don't talk for three hours because you have nothing to say. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But at the same time, like that's not every episode and that's not every guest that comes on. And that's right. not every, every topic that I want to talk about needs to be discussed in three hours. So, so that's a little bit, that's where it gets a little bit tough for creators like you and me is, is finding that balance of, okay, I'll game, I'll play this game. I'll get on the platform and game a little bit and, yeah. and uh, not take that time for myself. But at the same time, like the, 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 the beauty of all of it and what makes it the payoff of it and the fact like the reason I moved platforms even though I know I'm not I'm literally making no money for like two months is uh is the community is the people that you get to meet and talk to and discuss have these conversations live before you came on we were talking about um whether or not people have a sufficient amount of empathy and why don't they is it an impatience thing are you just busy is it just hard to be empathetic and we don't have access to our emotions so like that's oh, the kind like of that. thing right like you that's just great. fall into a conversation and then you just and get deep yeah and then you I just feel go. like uh, well th that the one thing that irks me about uh living on planet earth is shallow conversation like, I, I get yes. it. it. It has its it has its reasons. When you're meeting someone on the street, you just don't mean like, hey, 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 what's the meaning of life? How are you? Like, right, what am right, I doing? Right, right, right. Forty two, <laughs> by the way. But go on. Oh, okay. We'll talk about that. <laughs> but but I, I feel like uh, yeah, shallow conversation doesn't do it for me anymore. And right. and when I really connect with someone, that's why having the community that you have is so great. That these people are willing to go deep. They're willing to to find yeah. some uncomfortable answers. Yes. Um, if it means that it's the truth. And, and I think that, that, you know, same with myself, you keep going and your community needs to know, like, they are the, they are the product. They yeah. are the, the stream. They are everything. 
And without them, there's there's nothing. Okay, no one's coming to the show. Right. So um, that's amazing that you that you've built this. Unbelievable. Do you right f- do you feel like your community keeps you accountable? Because that was something that I recently discovered that I was talking to my therapist about the fact that I've had longer times in between depression episodes and I was like well it kind of is because I'm constantly talking to people about how do I manage my depression what do I do so these are all reminders and they get me out of my head and then there's also the 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 sense of I gotta be there these people are expecting me to be here at this hour and uh I might not you know there are days where you need self-care and you need to take off and everything at 100 percent but um you know, these people are expecting me to be there. So most of the time, I you bet your butt I'm going to be there. People are dependent. So do you feel like you are also accountable for, like, you feel like you're more accountable with your depression? Your, I, Sorry, you have depression and anxiety, right? Is that? I do not have either of them. Oh! Okay. I, I, ex- I experience them from time to time. Oh. Uh, the language, we can get into language in a no, bit. No, I love that. Um, I love that. I, that's yeah, perfect. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's one of my, that's like, I've preached that for the last six years. Um, just how we, how we talk about these things and change our language. And I'm so for free speech, self-expression. You say what no, you I, want, No, as man. soon as you said it, I remembered the episode in which you like <laughs> spent 20 minutes talking about this. So yeah, sorry, but, but go ahead. Uh, no, no, it's not me telling anyone. It's just how I choose to relate no, to these No, and I res- Yeah, emotions. please, but please tell everybody else and I will stop interrupting you. So you okay, cool. Well, yes. well, uh, you know, I used to always say like I have depression and I have anxiety and I was given this slip of paper from my psychiatrist saying that. So I'm like, okay, there is the proof that is true. This this is what I have. And it gave me some power and maybe attention at first to say that not in a bad way, but in attention saying, you know, these are the things that you have Scott and we're very sorry. And, and maybe I did get some empathy. And after a while, I'm like, I have depression, but I feel great nine out of 10 days. So, and I, and I have anxiety, but I haven't had a panic attack or felt anxious in a month. And and I'm doing these things like going to the gym, I'm eating healthy, I'm taking my omega threes and B vitamins, and I take medication, and I'm managing these things pretty well. Like, why do I say I have depression still after after the first diagnosis in 2008? Mm-hmm. It's been 10 years, and I still have it. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like um, my mom dealt with breast cancer. She went through all the treatment, and and she she beat it. And you still have to manage it with 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 uh, diet and exercise, and you have to take tamoxifen, this other drug. But she doesn't say she has cancer anymore. It's like she had cancer. She's she's maintaining mm-hmm. these these health this healthy lifestyle now. Mm-hmm. So when I think of depression and anxiety, if we view it as an illness, uh, you could say that it can be managed beautifully after a time, and after you figure some things out and know yourself a little more and what you're what what makes you tick. And for now, I, I say. I have experienced depression or I experience depression from, from time to time, or I, I get depressed. And usually when I get depressed or I experience depression or anxiety, I know exactly the cause, which is v- I'm very, very lucky for that. Cause I realize some people, it, it seems to come out of nowhere right. and they're like, I don't know what happened. I just started sweating. I can't breathe. My heart's pumping. And for that, you know, it takes a lot of work sometimes, depending on the individual, to really get to the bottom of maybe why these things happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do feel for those people. I'm very lucky. I know if I have um, have too many coffees, if I have too much bread, if I have too much refined sugar, if I don't go to the gym and I've missed the gym in like three days, if I haven't gone outside, if I haven't conversed with a friend, if I haven't called my mom this week, um, I'm going to feel it. So there's always a reason for why I'm feeling the way I do a lot of the time. That's why I say I experience it from time to time because the majority, vast majority of the time, I am fortunate to say that I am feeling good. Yeah. So, but it is a chronic illness. It's a lifelong condition. I mean, you will, unlike cancer where you can say, you can do the count and you can say there are no more cancer cells in your body, uh it's it's usually you know most people just experience sadness they don't go into profound depression because they didn't call their mom and didn't exercise and all that right so 
So I feel like that's the, I'm not arguing with you at all or trying to change your mind. I don't, I'm just trying to express kind of what you made me think about. As this you is having, about. Th that's great. This is, this is having a conversation. Yes. So I think, um, I, I think the, the discussion around depression is, okay, major depressive disorder, yes, you can look at the DSM-5 and you can tick all those boxes and say, yay. But the truth is, if someone dies in, or you experience some tragedy, you're going to be depressed and you're going to tick all those boxes and symptoms. Like You're going to say, yes, lack of appetite. It's been like six months and I still feel terrible right. after someone maybe passes away. Sure, you're experiencing serious depression at that point, okay? Um, that can be experiential depression. It doesn't mean that you're going to have depression for the rest of your life. That's it's true. Something happened in your life. You are depressed. Maybe you even had a diagnosis from a doctor, um, from a, a, a psychiatrist or whatever. Um, and then how you deal with it is you, you, it's dealt with. You may be still mourning. You're grieving. But eventually it subsides and you get on with your life. With, what people talk When people talk about Depression being a chronic illness. Again, empathy first. I totally get it. I'm the one on medication. I've been through it too. My plan is to get off of the medication because we're sold this idea that depression is a chemical imbalance and everything you read, it's not true. I know it's funky and I don't want to uh, offend anyone, but, but we need to look at the evidence where in the 1950s, these things were all brought up. The reason it was called a chemical imbalance was from psychiatrists because we knew what a normal brain looked like and we still know what a depressed brain looks like. So we say the most unscientific thing we can saying a chemical imbalance. And if you just think of that as a researcher, chemical imbalance, well, what chemicals are we talking about? What part of the brain are we talking about? So most health advocates say, well, dopamine and serotonin. Every mental health advocate knows these neurotransmitters, dopamine and serotonin. We constantly look at the biological factors for depression, but as you've built this community, I don't think we look enough at social factors for helping Yes, there's for helping a lot, a lot of social factors that are Of course. In so but when I we think, think of chronic depression, we think, okay, the solution might be medication is pushed a lot but lifestyle changes don't happen yes and if you say depression is a chronic illness i i ask people what have you done to to combat depression we un we try to understand the individual first and if it's just medication then i'd say okay like that's how many, not a long-term solution right of course not it's like right. oh, how many how many friends do you have do you have a community online offline uh, do you have a, a meaningful uh, job What's your, what's your relationship with your family like? Are you exercising? What are you eating? Have you ever, ever tried changing the way you eat? You go to any doctor and if you're having stomach problems, they'll be like, okay, try to get rid of gluten and dairy and see how you feel. Everyone's experience is different. I am the human guinea pig. The reason I think I'm, I'm where I am now is because I tried everything, man. Everything that seems so weird to me and seemed like such hocus pocus voodoo garbage. I'm like, ah, let's give it a shot. I'm going to be the experimenter. I'm not going to tell anyone else what to do. Because if someone says I'm depressed, imagine I go up to them and be like, what, are you still eating bread? Yeah. That's it. Can, yeah. yeah. So I like bread, man. That's yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You kidding <laughs> it's me? The wheat. You kidding of me? Of course not. I'll solve of your problem. Somebody exactly. told me the other day I need to eat more yogurt and that would fix it. That was that come on. Was, yeah. So we know that's not true. We know that medication works for some. We know that diet. We know that exercise. We know that people need better relationships. Sometimes we need that people hate their jobs and when they quit and they get something new that helps too. So many different things. All I challenge people to do is try something new, something that you haven't done before, something that might not even have a bunch of evidence, like, uh, like. Osho meditation, which I absolutely love. Dynamic meditation. Some some funky stuff. It's your body. It's your mind. Try some new things. Experiment a little. Mm. I forget what the question was, but I just went on a little rant. I don't think I remember what the question was either. So we're good. Uh, so what do you what do you think about depression being like a chronic illness? Because there's so much we still don't understand. Right? Oh, totally, it's totally. So we tough. don't know. I mean, it's the brain trying to figure out the brain. So totally. In terms of chemical imbalance, it is a catch-all. It is a catch-all term that is just, it's used to, I mean, anything is a chemical imba imbalance, right? Like diabetes, that's a 
chemical imbalance in your bloodstream. Yeah, exactly. Like, absolutely. Um, so it is it is a catch-all term, and it was an easy way to say, well, you don't have enough serotonin and dopamine. But we have another saying here on the stream that uh, that one of our moderators, Bliffles, came up with. And that's uh, if you can't make your own, uh, if you can't make your own serotonin and dopamine, store bought is just fine. So <laughs> definitely, uh, right on, right, right. That's so, nice. That's nice. Yeah. So definitely going out and trying everything under the sun. That is not necessarily the first direction that we are taught to go into. But that is something that is super, super important to do. And every conversation I've had with people who feel disillusioned or, or say like, oh, mental health is made up, it usually starts with them saying some kind of crap about, you know, everybody just takes medication. And while I respect and understand this con misconception, I think, I mean, it comes from a lot of things. One, medication is still stigmatized. Uh, two, we do have quite a few people who will still like uh, the, the the numbers the real numbers say that there are still a lot of people a lot more people are under medicated than there are people who are over medicated there are people who are over medicated meaning taking medication that they don't need but there are more people who do not take the medication that they need just because of the medical the, the stigma behind it um, so, and this, 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 the, the number that I'm citing, like the more or less usually pertains to ADHD because ADHD is an, is a big one where there's a huge, uh, where there's a lot of stigma pertaining to taking, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in a, in, uh, a stimulant. Um, so we don't name, we do not, in order to not promote, uh, pharmaceutical companies in any shape or form, we only name generic names or descriptors of drugs. So we'll say like an SSRI. Uh, mm -hmm. or yeah, so we won't, or antidepressant, but we won't say like, I don't know, a name of like a specific name. Right. Right. So, so I guess, yeah, go ahead. Why do you, why do you think, cause this puzzles me too. Mm -hmm. I think uh, being under medicated, why do you think people like with depression, why do you think so many people are depressed today? Like, and, and the argument that, okay, um, anxiety and depression are on the rise, and then what most people will say is, well, that's because more people are talking about yes, it. Yes, okay. right. that's but the just first because, thing I usually say. But just because more people are talking about it, we still need to ask the why are they depressed in the first place? Why are so many depre people depressed in the first place today? Why do you think? I mean, I, I, I believe that we are in, an, in, an, in one of those huge leaps, like we were in the early 1900s, so my background... I graduated with a degree in history, so I'll, I'll oh throw that. Oh my gosh, awesome. Yeah. So I'll throw, that's where the research, that's where the research background comes from. I love from. it. So I'll throw that out there. In the early 1900s, there was a very similar huge generational gap happening. Um, it was, that had to, that had to do with uh, people coming back from World War One, and then kids going into the 20s, right? You have the flappers and you have the freer lifestyle and the Gilded Age and everything. So there's a huge incongruence. They're very similar to ours. And it had to do with a lot of the fact that we had a huge uh, change, a booming of industry that was unprecedented and not seen at the time. And I feel like we're in another one of those ages. I feel like mm. that is the time period that we're in. We have a huge technological boom. Our brains have not figured out how to handle all the information that's coming at us. And it truly, I mean, it is one of the best times to live in. You guys, we have antibiotics. We have soap. For sure. Pretty good. Pretty good, soap honestly. Soap is amazing. Soap is amazing. It's so good, <laughs> man. But at the same time, uh, and I and I'm definitely going to be one of those people that goes social media. It's it's true, and I'm not saying it as a bad thing. Without social media, we wouldn't be sitting here and talking the way we are, right? Like we connected over Twitter, and of course, yeah. So um, if used the right way, but I'm totally with you. Social right. media is so it's bad. It's not that I see, but I don't like making anything into a boogeyman and being like, ah, I got it. It's this thing, you know? I because, think it's the boogeyman. Yeah, I honestly you do? think it's the boogeyman. I, I hesitate to do that because I see people go, ah, video games. And in the 80s, people going, ah, rap music. So I, I hesitate. <laughs> I hesitate to be like, ooh, I figured it out. It's social media, you know? Because right, there's right. so much good coming from social media as well. And I do believe the good outweighs the bad. I think the issue is, 
we are not yet prepared. We do not yet have the tools for everything that came at us. We do not yet yeah. have the coping mechanisms to teach our kids. We do not yet have enough of a generational change to say, to, for me to be able to, you, you know, the way I raise my children, having been raised on technology is very different than parents right now who are, you know, who might be in their late 30s raising 10 year olds who are on, you know, like that generational gap is, very different and they might not know how right. to approach online bullying whereas i've experienced it firsthand and i've dealt with it and so the conversation i'm going to have with my kid is going to be very different than somebody even 10 years older than me is going to have oh, with completely their kid. Right? right so i hesitate to say that social media is the thing i think we're just not caught up yet that's really interesting no, that's that's really interesting because I, I guess it, it no, obviously it is a tool depends how much sure. you use like it, anything. how you use it, of course. Um, but j just in Canada, the rates of self harm for for girls, young yes. girls mm -hmm. skyrocketed like 30% within the yes. last five eating years. Eating disorders are through eating the roof. disorders. Unbelievable. So, you know, I, again, it's so hard to measure these things. Right. But if you put two and two together, I'd say Instagram isn't helping no, it's not. um no. these these young girls right. and, and developing that such such a vulnerable and critical stage in life right. man like i i i am so happy that i grew up the way i did and when i did i had Same. the best childhood ever oh my goodness i did not but i'm very <laughs> happy that that childhood is not recorded step by step like, I'm even happy that, like, my MySpace right. stuff doesn't exist anymore. You know what I mean? Oh, my like, gosh. You had MySpace? Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nice, Top nice. five and everything. Come on. Come on. Uh <laughs> I'm just happy I got to experience 2D video games moving to 3D in N64. That just blew my m That's probably when depression started. I couldn't handle it. I'm like, what do you mean? It's 3D. Mario can go up, down, forward, back. Oh, my God. Yes. Mom, help! Mom, I don't know what to do about this. And then your Stop. mother's like, video games are the devil. And you're like, no! Oh, my God. Yes. See, so I think you're, with depression, it's so complicated. Mm -hmm. It is. Like, mental illness is so complicated. Yes. The brain is still such a mystery. We're right. trying to catch up. We still have this 200,000-year-old brain, and we're driving cars and using computers. It's right. So it's so weird. Yes. So I love how you mentioned, like, we're trying to catch up. The So what I always argue is that technology changes, but our biology stays the same. Mm -hmm. And our biology, we are still craving human connection, real human connection. We're still craving the outdoors. We'll, we're still craving meaning and purpose. Yes. Very and, Walden of you, Walden and Thoreau. Very, of course. Yes. <laughs> but every human you meet, everyone, no matter what age, well, maybe younger, it doesn't matter. But even in elementary school, high school, when I do talks, everyone wants to make an impact. Like that's why they're there. That's why they go to school. That's why they're, when they go to work, they're like, I want to make an impact. I want to make a difference. I want to make sure that when I croak, I mattered. Yeah. And 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 so and a lot of people in the jobs they work today, they're not getting that. And they they come home and they're like, Did I like what did I do? How did I change the world? I say part two of that is we don't yet have uh, a lot of us have a hard time figuring out our values. And so we believe that I matter, we measure how we matter in wrong ways, right? We totally. end up measuring it through likes, through hashtags, through a yeah. lot of stuff that did you, you know, oh, I'm, you might have mattered that day because your post blew up and that's, that's great for you. But is that mattering? Is that, is that making a difference? In the, so our measurement of that is also off. Oh, that's beautiful. And, and I think, yeah, I think people um, and I myself, for sure, have valued dumb shit for a really long time. Yeah. And valuing, valuing, uh, you know, as I'd argue, money is very, very important. Yeah. And uh, but to value it for more than it's actually worth, and to to think that that's just a means to an end to, to just get more, get more, get more. If you just ask five whys, like I'm going to work, why? Because I need to make money. Why? Because I want to buy more shit. It's it's like. Yeah, you so get right it, into the corner of oh. <laughs> oh yeah so it's like i i think depression today 
um, and anxiety disorders make complete sense. I, I really think they do. With the way that we're living today, we're catching up with technology. We're more isolated than ever. Um, the, the foods we are eating aren't as nutritionally rich as they used to be. We're I not have, exercising as much before. As well. <laughs> yeah, like I, I think that, that we, and not to mention that our, our needs for the most part are being met through, through shelter and you look at uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. But mm -hmm. so now we have that time to actually think about how can I make my, my life better and we're, we're doing a lot more thinking today. And I think all of these things combined, man, is just a recipe for, yeah. for psychological distress. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I don't think anybody could disagree with that. And I, I think going back to kind of our original question and beginning of the conversation, um, depression and anxiety can be chronic conditions but I feel like they're so over, um, mm, not overused. They're so over, you know what? I totally lost, I totally lost the term I'm trying to use. But basically, basically what I'm trying to say is that depression and anxiety are something that it's easy for us to pinpoint onto and say, well, this is like you said. You check all the boxes, and and maybe not easy. Maybe easy is a is is an easy term for me to throw out there. But hmm. you check all the boxes, and you can say, yes, I've experienced depression. Yes, I experienced anxiety. Maybe I have it chronically, but that overshadows. That's the word I was looking for. That overshadows the fact that some people, like somebody with diabetes, like somebody with chronic migraines, do have issues balancing cannot literally cannot make that serotonin and 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 dopamine on their own and they do need medication to help them but there is just so much overshadowing that there's so much muddiness there's so much us trying to figure out uh our brains and how they work and why they work that way that i think we're conflicting two things right so like you said somebody uh somebody might get diagnosed with oh you have depression but we're not looking at their lifestyle and, and where they are and maybe they're lonely and all of that stuff first. And that's why we're saying here is this label. And it makes sense, but it conflicts then with people who have depression in a way that is chronic. So they, it kind of like overlaps too much and we haven't figured out a more precise way to determine that. Does that make sense? No, it makes total sense. Okay. And, I feel like I was just... And with... No, no, no. What I... What I <laughs> I, I what I really struggle with talking about mental health is you need like you seem to need a disclaimer before everything you say. It's like, sure. no, this is for some people. Okay, I'm about to say something for some people, right. not all people. Right. So for some people, yeah, like, oh my God, the stories I'm sure you've heard and I've heard over I'm, the past. No, I'm one of those people years. that like, it's like yeah. No, uh, it's like, man, do I feel for people that that take medication, but then they they're still trying. They're still trying everything. And you know what? They're trying different diets. They're going to therapy. And it's still, uh, they're still taking medication because that is what they need. And I'm like, all the power to you, man. If you have a high functioning life and, and you're enjoying life, then pff, who the hell do I care if you're taking a pill a day? Psh, right. Take the pill a day. Well, that's I call them me. brain, I call them brain vitamins. That's what I call. Them. <laughs> I like that. That's yeah, literally, brain vitamins. That's literally me. That was. Uh, and the reason that I that I hesitate and I get so like defensive even maybe about it without even recognizing is because three times, three times I attempted to get off of uh, medication. And, and you can say a lot about that, like medication is addictive. There, there's a lot of stuff that's coming out right now. People course, trying yeah. to figure it out. Sure. So we're surpassing all of that. <laughs> but three times I tried to come off medication and I ended up almost ending my life. So... I don't think, and and I'm a yoga instructor. I do this for a second job. I'm clearly very functional because I hold a nine to five and then I go and do this, right? So uh, I talk to a therapist. I obviously I have a psychiatrist. I see my general doctor once a year to make sure my blood work is on track. Like I eat as healthy as I can. So 
I check off all of the good working boxes, but my brain don't work no good. <laughs> like, <laughs> so that's why, like, I like to use myself as an example. Like, no, I'm not saying you should take three times to figure out, like, hey, maybe this time I won't be suicide. Like, I'm not saying, like, go and try to taper off and get off. Don't, don't, don't anybody do that without talking to their doctor. But yeah. what I, what I am saying is there are definitely cases out there. There are definitely people who need it like insulin they need it like an anti uh anti-migraine medication they 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 need it and there's no really way around that figuring that out i think takes us change and i'm seeing this change slowly i'm i saw my therapist change tactics from going to okay let's try medication so the tactic used to be we'll put you on medication and then if you're seeing a therapist at the same time the therapist will get you to a point where you can then come off the medication right and we're slowly seeing which that. is the ideal part for anyone the right. ideal is to not be on medication your whole life right well nobody wants to it and it's there's nothing wrong with being on medication it's just nobody wants to be of course dependent not on yeah. having to take something every day. I think anyone who takes it would agree that not everyone loves, no one loves taking a pharmaceutical. Right. The ideal part would be to get off it one day. I'm not saying yes, I'm, they should. You know, but I think about that and I immediately think about the fact that I've been taking birth control since I was 14 and not once did I go, gee, I sure hope I don't have to take this one day. Like, it's just, I take it every day and I go, no babies, no baby. Like, <laughs> there's not there's not a part of my brain that's like, I sure hope that I was infertile one day so I don't have to take that. Do you know what I mean? Like, it but depends the, on the medication for sure. Hmm. Hmm. I'm just thinking of birth control. I don't have experience in that one. Mm. Um. But but there are certain medications. That what I'm trying to say is, you know, somebody needs an aspirin a day. There are certain things that like we just we just don't uh, mind as much. We don't go, oh, I'm starting to take aspirin, but it's so I can taper off of it later. No, but but I think but the ideal state, the ideal for any person would be you don't have to take anything and you'd function perfectly. Oh, sure. Yeah. Of and course. then I wouldn't okay, have so... children when I didn't want them and then I would have yeah, children exactly. when I wanted them. Sure. Exactly. So sure. that would be the ideal state. And I think um, a tough part for people is thinking that that taking that pharmaceutical is taking you away from that ideal state. And that's yes. where I don't think it's right. It's like, no, it's actually bringing you closer to where you want to be. To, to so, a functioning life. Right? Exactly, exactly. So that's like, we have to think about what these things are for and what they're trying to do for us. Now, the point is, okay, if you're taking antidepressant and it's actually making you worse, okay, that's actually taking you away from the ideal state. And you can try something else. You can try a different, different antidepressant. A lot of people go through trial and error. But the point is to, to have the most functioning life as possible. The issue is science, like for the mind, we still don't know the exact recipe because the exact recipe changes right. for everyone. Right. You ask any psychiatrist how the medication works and if they give the same medication to everyone, there is an awesome, oh my gosh, I'd love to send it to you. Yes, 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 please. On the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, um, CBC. They had all these psychiatrists in a panel. And they were asked, like, do you know how antidepressants work? Why they work differently for some people? Why they work differently right. for others? Right. And they don't know. They honestly, a psychiatrist don't know. We basically know how antidepressants work on the brain, but we don't know why they work better for certain individuals than others. All right. they could really say is we know what age groups work better right. and what genders. Right. But based on individuals, it depends on so many other things that they just don't know. And it's like, wow. What a mystery still. It's such a mystery. And it's it's exciting, but also adds to a hell of a lot of suffering in the meantime. Yes. But mm -hmm. but that's what I that's what and that's exactly where I want to see us go from let's try medication and then get you to a point with your therapist where you don't need it any longer to let's try with your therapist to teach you all kinds of techniques and then see if you still need medication. Right, that shift. Oh, okay, is, I see what you're is saying. It's a huge difference. Yes, the goal, the end is totally different. Right, the, the end... one goal is we'll fix you and then we'll take you off of this and then good luck. And the other goal is let's give you everything you need and then once we've ruled out that it's nothing else, then we'll give you medication so that you can. Right, does that make sense? Yeah, and I, I don't even, you know, I don't know if I have an alternative. But I, I hate the the idea that my brain was broken 
or that I right. needed to be fixed. And a and lot I, of people know, feel that way. Yeah. I know, and it's like, no, the people, you're not broken, man. Right. Nothing, there's nothing, you didn't do anything wrong. I just, like, did a Facebook post today. I'm like, stop apologizing for being yourself. Like, stop apologizing for who you are. And people feel sorry sometimes just for existing. They think they're yes. a burden because right. there's some broken individual who has depression. And I'm like, fuck, that's the worst thing. And and no one deserves to feel that way. And and I, I again, I feel for those people. So again, to kind of circle back, is it a chronic illness? Um, for for some people, absolutely. And you take your medication, man. And you, if it works then whatever works, you know, whatever works. Whatever makes and you a person, like a full, ex yes. Exactly. But if you're still struggling and you're still on medication, um, keep, you know, if you have the energy, just keep trying new stuff. And I'd argue just be, be your own experiment. Think of it, think of your life as a cool little science experiment and do these different things with, you know, safely uh, and see how you feel. That's it. Like I have this awesome uh, guy in the community and he's just like, I'm, I'm just going to try meat and veggies. I'm just going to try. I know I'm talking about diet a lot, but this worked for him. Like, he's like, I'm just going to try meat and veggies. Did it for like 60 days. And just, I Skyped him the other day. He's like, first of all, he's ripped because he can have energy to go to the gym now. Right, right, right. right. And he just feels so much better. And he's like, I never knew it would be a thing. I was skeptical, but I gave it a try. And, and I think having that mind of curiosity and trying new things that, that's the most beautiful thing you can do. What's the worst? Oh, it doesn't work? Okay. That's well, where you, you work. It off the list. Right. It, it didn't work. Okay. I tried eating hummus for 90 days. <laughs> it did nothing. Check. Tried the hummus. Okay. Next. So I think to people have an open mind about their own mental health is a pretty crucial thing. Oh, I like that. To having an open mind about your own mental health. That is, yeah. that is brilliant. That but is, your community, yeah. they ask the deep questions too. Like I have a feeling you guys can go deep and have that open mind. I'm about to go is... and tell you all the things that they said while you and I were going off on our on our side quest. Oh, okay. Yeah. I hope they called me out. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what else do you want to talk about? So uh, we talked about depression, but the anxiety part is what your, you know, what the channel is all about. Well, it's about both, but <laughs> your experience with anxiety, did that happen early on for you? Uh anxiety was was depression's buddy for me um and depre it helped yeah it helped run the show when when de when i was totally down and couldn't get out of bed anxiety kept me moving nervously um so right yeah so they were they were always each other's buddy but i don't but i didn't have a name to them until i turned 19 and moved uh and moved out and got to college and in college i had free uh therapy and that's where i was able to put a name to things enough so that um i could start figuring out what the names meant right mm. yeah so so the labels in that point are fantastic right uh, that's the time yeah. when, yes yes totally yes. totally so do you still um uh, have you know bouts of anxiety is it is it chronic or the, what are some some things that that um increase that feeling of anxiety so I will usually, I'm one of those people, I'm very, very highly self-aware, but I still get caught off by myself. There are still times where I like, I feel like anxiety finds a new surprising way to get to me. And then I like turn around, I'm like, ah, oh, I saw that, <laughs> oh, you sneaky. But it's like a little too late where like I've went off and gotten really stressed out and maybe had a panic attack. And then I was like, ah. Oh, Oh, I did not see that one coming. Oh, good job. Good job, you. But now I'm noticing it, and now I'm going to make a note of it, and you're not going to come back that way. Oh, I um, love it. Nice, nice. So, But that's the same thing with, I feel like, with anxiety and depression. They both came around the same way, and they both stuck around the same way. And, um, But, yeah, so it's, is that similar for you? And I want to go – I promise, audience, I'm going to go back to you. You guys made some brilliant points. I'm going to read them up. Oh, yeah, I would love to see what they wrote. Um. So that's interesting. I just have another question. Um, how do you how do you see do you see anxiety depression because you're like oh, I see you coming back that way coming through the back door. Do you see depression and anxiety as like as entities as things oh, as yeah. uh, people? Um, yeah. How do you how do you see them? So depression is this like ugly monster that like drips like there's like just black substance dripping from it. 
And what it does is it tries to push me down this pit. And I usually don't recognize I'm in the pit until like, there's like a, usually a final shove of like spiraling thoughts that are pushed by, that are brought on by maybe, you know, like a regular person might have, uh, like let's say a paper I wrote got rejected, right? A blog post I wrote got rejected. And uh, you know, people get upset and it's totally normal to get upset, but you overall you bounce back. You go like, okay, I'll get them next time, right? Whereas for me, that is a set off to go spiraling down into this black hole of, well, you never get anything right. And of course it's because you're terrible and that's why nobody wants to publish anything from you. And it's about your personality and it's about your looks and it's about, and so that spiral eventually ends me in the deep hole. And then out of this hole, it's, uh, it's, it's made of mud. So keep, guys, I know this is all crazy, but this is how I have to like, de-personify really it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In order yeah. to like you, fight You made it. the scene, yeah, you, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so it's a deep hole and it's wet and it, there's dirt and it's wet. So it's very hard to climb out of this. And you usually need somebody to extend their hand or drop a ladder down. Um, and it, de it depends what happens. You try not to rely on other people too much. So hopefully maybe you find a ladder yourself. Or somebody else points something out, and that's your ladder coming down to help you, uh, to help you come out. And the thing that I've noticed that I was literally just talking to my therapist about yesterday is that the in between times between anxiety, depression, really having a lot of a, a big hole uh, in my life are uh, are a lot shorter. It like two. We were talking about the fact that two, three years ago, it, the 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 it, it would be like three months in a hole, whereas wow. now it's. A week a week and a half maybe wow and do you do you when you're in that state like are these the things that come to mind during the depressive state or is it once you're out you're like oh i was just in that pit right there or are you it seeing depends. these things now and experiencing that it depends so if i'm like in bed and feeling like crap like i literally can feel like it feels like darkness around me and it right. feels like I'm in that hole. And I will, and that's how I will explain it. Like my husband will be like, what's going on? I'll be like, it's just dark. It's everything's dark right now and mm. it feels crappy. Whereas, um, yeah, and w with anxiety, it's a little bit different. Anxiety is just, um, is just like the other part of, it's, do you know, I don't know how much you know of Freud, but he had this concept of the id and the it, right? Yeah. Um, and so it, it, it's just, it's just that other negative part of my brain that's, that's, that talks to me that I have to fight back. Got it. Do you feel like it's always there or it just, and then it activates or does yeah. it completely disappear? Well, anxiety. So depression, I, you know, I'm depression, d depressive episodes also serve an evolutionary purpose, but anxiety has a very, very specific point in our lives in which it is very useful. <laughs> depression is just like a natural emotional state fluctuation. Uh, not depression itself, but sadness, right? Like normal sadness. Whereas anxiety and nervousness, they it, nervousness has a very, very helpful part for us to play. I mean, sadness does too, right? Without sadness, there's no joy. But I feel like like nervousness it keeps you alive. It keeps you not sticking your fingers in sockets. It keeps you not eating rotting fruit. You know, like it, it has a lot of really good purposes. So I feel like anxiety is always one of those that is able to convince me that I'm doing it for the right reason. I'm overthinking this because I'm preparing, right? Mm. Or I am, uh, I am, or I'm over preparing because that means that I'm going to find a solution. Like it, it, it tricks, it, it tricks you very well. Right, right. Yeah, that's, so that's really interesting. Difference. No, that's you? great. You, you, oh, you tell me back. What about you? Um, so I, I went off medication actually for the last three days. Okay. When I actually, you can see in the back, see the guitar and mic and keyboard thing. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So when I make when I make music, and I do like motivational audios for my community, I get off medication to go into a very detoxed and uh, difficult state. Huh. And and it, it makes me extremely depressed and anxious but i feel like my best work comes out of there because i know exactly what to say to someone who's in that state because i'm talking to myself oh, so so wow because i'm yeah. the opposite i cannot write when i'm depressed that's fascinating to go ahead and Sorry. this goes to the entire community everyone's different right. and that's an end show we're all different <laughs> right um so uh, you know i i can speak to recent experience that um 
this yeah three days is enough i don't, I don't know the half-life of the medication i'm on it's something probably like 48 hours or something or 72 so it was getting pretty deep and i don't i don't see it as a person i see it as like i'm still myself mm -hmm. and everything i see and hear and witness and feel is so so real um and it all exists perfectly it's just a completely different side of the world mm -hmm. and it's still it's still the world everything is still the exact same it's just my response to it is so much heavier and deeper and i will cry and bawl when a pin drops in that state like so if someone tells me their story of depression now mm -hmm. um, i'm like I, I empathetic and I, I try to understand it and i can really listen deeply if if yesterday if someone started telling me their story of depression i couldn't i i wouldn't be able to listen i would just automatically cry and and just completely be out of the out of the picture just because i would almost feel too much right and and uh it, i couldn't function that way right so i feel like if it's almost like night and day like day is when you're feeling great night it's it's not a different reality it's the same reality same planet same city but you're seeing things in just a completely different way and to me that's kind of what depression is it gives me new insights it makes me it helps me create different things it helps me see things differently it helps me feel different things so for the last 10 years on medication i know the medication very 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 well and there are bouts every month I go off it for a little bit if I'm doing something different, if I'm going on a different trip, if I'm wanting to discover something new. I've used it uh, almost as a, a strange gateway to experience different things, as strange as that sounds. Um, I, I know it very well. So depression to me is just seeing things in a very different light that can be almost advantageous in some way. Does it feel like there's like a filter coming through that you're you're looking at things through like a different color lens almost or is it just is it just like what's going on you just understand things differently? Yeah, it's never yeah, I get that the, the that analogy all the time like things are colors are muted, the saturation is decreased, black and white cloud over you. And I get it because, you know, people try to describe, you know how hard mm -hmm. it is to describe. Oh, a feeling, right. Yeah, feeling. Right. right. It's right. so hard. Right. So, right. so it's, 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 but it's not like that. The colors are fine. Everything's fine. It's just what's happening inside and, and physiologically in my body that feel very heavy. It's a very physical part for me. But the, the way I see things um, that bring different thoughts and reactions is what changes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I've tried to see it not as a, not as a negative um, for me personally. Obviously, it's a negative if you're in it day in and day out. But if, to me, I've used it to my advantage. Interesting. Yeah. But that's in that I feel like that's kind of what I've done with anxiety. What you're describing with depression is that what I've done with anxiety is just be like, okay, so let's see what you're doing good for me, how you're doing good for me, and utilize yeah. and leverage that to, to my advantage as much as I can. And then kind of not toss away the rest, but take the rest as, a, as part of the trip. No, that's amazing. And I love how you have made a relationship with it. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's not it's like- It's helped depersonify it very much. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Because it's not something that you're completely fearing anymore when you kind of have said, hi, right. hi, welcome back. Okay, I, I got to do grocery shopping, got some things to do. I'll carry you for a bit anxiety. It's really cool how you've have you've made buddies and have understood it that way. Thank you. I always I always invite people like I, I think for me it's worse thinking if there's a monster under the bed rather than checking. And if you check and there is a monster under your bed, well at least you know what it looks like and you can meet that motherfucker eye to eye right. and say, All right, I know what I'm dealing with right, right now. What's right. up? Right. And you you get the baseball bat in the closet and you, you work on your you, coping tools to beat the monster. I like or that. You, I like yeah, that. or you make friends with it and say, hey, what you doing down there, buddy? And yeah. You give it a pillow. All right, if you're going to be under my bed for a bit, right. I'll give you a pillow, give right. you a blanket. You look a little cold and I'll see you in the morning. And sometimes in the morning, he or she, the monster is still there. Sometimes it's gone. But to me, that reminds me of what you've done with anxiety is is – made friends i really think that's cool i think it also helped to depersonify it because it became the happy living like fully living marie is this entity and yeah. then there's this other marie that's not me that's not who i want to be that's not that's what i strive and actively 
not not actively push away from, but actively move away from. That is not my state that I am because for a very long time I owned it and I wore it. Like I am depressed. I am depression, right? Yeah. And so depersonifying it is saying, this is this other thing. It's still part of me, but it's this other thing and it's this other piece of me. Whereas, you know, what my goal is, is to be as much of me, the real me, as much as I can be. The depressed me is a part of me, but it's it's not me. It's not. Oh my gosh. Right? I absolutely love that. And I love how we have your voice sharing that with the world because that's a beautiful perspective. Oh. Um, oh. What? Look at you. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> number. No, because I think it, that's like how I think of it. If I say I have depression or I have, that's kind of like the I am. Yeah. I am depressed. I am anxious. Well, if you're saying I am, okay, so are you a depressed person when you're on the computer? when you're on the phone, when you're walking to work, when you're watching a funny movie, right. when you're out for dinner. And for like, some people, they are. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's right. But yeah. for those who have still managed it successfully, but they're still saying, I am a depressed person, I am an anxious person. What if you just change the language to experience? Because for a lot of people dealing with it, there are those minute moments then where you're not anxious. When you're maybe get home and you can crash on the bed, when you can have a hot shower and you can finally decompress, just that little, little moment. And I think that takes away that I am. That shows you that it is a different thing and that you are you and that something else creeps in maybe 90% of the time, maybe 99% of the time, but there's still that 1% that you are not anxiety. I think that's the proof yes. that you are you. And I think that's that's something that you do a great job explaining. That's very sweet of you. Thank you. I really, really appreciate your entire perspective. And I, it's, it's beautiful. And I, I think one of the reasons why we do label ourselves is because, I mean, labeling, labeling is something that is done to us since we're very young, right? Like our, our mothers will be like, oh, that's my messy kid, or that's my kid who's lazy, or that's my kid who's not as good at school. Like, those labels get slapped on us pretty young. And then we mm -hmm. kind of, as we grow up and we grow out of, you know, maybe the messy label, we go and we look for new labels for ourselves. And if you find that in your mental health, then then that's that's the first one you stumbled upon. You gotta try it on and see if it fits and then, uh, and then maybe walk away from it. Or maybe some people end up wearing them for a very long time. That's very cool. And I think cool. again, <laughs> and I, no, 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 but that's great. <laughs> Because, okay, you know, I I would argue, see, it, it depends on the individual. Bop, bada, bop, bada, bop. If people find community in saying that I have depression and they find community and identity in that, um, I wish them all the best. Right. For me personally and those in my community, we we drop the label. and And I think just because if you say you have depression – I think and you identify with that, well, it makes it that much harder to lose. No one wants to lose something that's part of them. There's, it's, there's pain in that. Mm -hmm. And you know, in, in, in how I feel, that's why I don't say I have because I don't want to identify with it. Mm -hmm. Sure, it's, it comes and goes and it's, I use it to my advantage and it's a different way I see the world and it, it, there's different feelings and emotions are constantly in motion. Um, but, but identifying with it, I, I don't think I think that would have hindered me and, and not helped me in the long run. Mm -hmm. What helped me was finding a community, but on the community, we don't even talk about mental health sometimes. Mm -hmm. Why does helping with mental health, we don't need to talk about mental health. No, it doesn't to help. have to be. Right. We can talk about movies. We can talk about what makes us tick, our likes, our dislikes, what we hate, politics, whatever we want. And, and to find community in anything, it doesn't need to be talking about depression to help with depression. It can be talking about what, what gives us value and meaning in our lives. I think that's that's what helped me the most. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. I, this has been, you're so insightful and so thoughtful and just everything, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're a mean person now. We really need to meet. We person. do, but you're, you're, a, you were a huge hero of mine and you just solidified that role for me because I watched your videos and I was like, this guy's doing it right. He's. He's figuring oh, it out. Man. And so, and and now, like, I remember when you, and this is so cheesy, but 
you guys, when Scott sent over his, uh, sent over on Twitter that he followed me, and I couldn't follow back fast enough, but I lost it. I like I I squ- I ran into my husband. I was like, "Do you know that Scott, the Scott from the from the toilet paper is is also needed for dip- that guy? He followed me. It's so cool. like <laughs> so, Oh my gosh, just, that's awesome. Just to give it's you so, an idea. So that's I, why when Twitter glitched, that's why I was like, oh, I did something wrong." Yeah. You want to tell people about that? Yeah, I we can't. So what happened was you I can't? No, you we, we can. We can. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. What happened was I, like, went to continue talking to, to Scott, and Twitter said that he had unfollowed me. And I sat there for, like, a good hour stewing and being like, oh, my God, you idiot. What did you do? How could you upset some? This guy, you look up to him. Now you probably said something in one of your posts, and then he probably thought <laughs> this is an idiot and, and was like, I don't yep. want to deal with this anymore. And so, and then I was like, you know what? I could think about this or he can tell me. Worst case, I'm not best friends with him. So worst case, he tells me to buzz off and I'm exactly where I am. So I messaged him and I said, hey, Scott, so this is nuts, but I saw that you unfollowed me and I was wondering if something happened, if I upset you or if I said something. And I don't normally do this. I this You are the only person I've ever done this to. And, normally, um, and, and I loved, I think I responded, like I loved how you were that open and honest. Like, did I do something? Like, let me know. That was so cool. But it, because it's because you mattered and your opinion mattered to me. You know, normally people unfollow and I'm like, all right, well, I'm not for everybody. But this was right. very like, I want to hang out with this guy. I want to know why he doesn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> Get him on Mixer just to talk about why he doesn't like me. <laughs> tell me. Tell me now no, for an hour, no, no. for the next hour. We no. definitely, hey, New Jersey's so close. We have to make this an in-person Dude. meetup. Dude. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Do you ever do meetups with uh, with your followers? Uh, I, they're uh, really across the world. I have a yeah, lot of people from great. London, from Germany. from So not so as cool. much as I would like to, unfortunately. There was a plan at one point for me to go to Ohio because there's a bunch of people in there. And that unfortunately fell through because I did have to go to Toronto for that mental. It, it you, yeah. Because I had to go to Toronto for that meetup. But that's still that's still all in my plans. And then we have conventions. Right. So if you're ever at any of the uh, PAX conventions. What's um, PAX? PAX is Penny Arcade. There's Penny Arcade East, Penny Arcade South. And they're all conventions. They're conventions for gamers, really. I need to go. I Why have I never gone to any kind of gaming convention? It is, it is done. February, last week in February, write it down, PAX East. And I will help you find a decently priced hotel and everything if you bring your butt down here. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Let, send me an email after. Let's get that going. Let's get but that one going. But one thing about games, because I... Man, I've been playing games since I was so young. I loved video games. Elementary school, I okay, here's I got my first GameCube. When I got my GameCube before I went to school, I would literally walk downstairs in the morning before I went to school, look at my GameCube, just look at it because I didn't have time to play. I touch the controllers and then I go to school. I love this thing. The first Game Boy I had, listen to this, listen to this. The first Game Boy I had, black and white screen, one game. Okay. After I was done playing it, it got a little warm on the back. Uh-huh. It did the batteries. Sure. So every time I stopped playing, I would take off the back, take off the batteries, and put a little damp cloth over top of the warm oh battery. My... So <laughs> the equivalent of that was that I used to, every morning, I used to take my Barbie and dress her up and put her on the couch like she was going to go about her day. And then I used to dress my Barbie back in her pajamas every night to go to sleep oh and tuck my... her in. So oh, I think that's the equivalent that's of the that. That's the cutest thing that's, ever. What are you talking? You you tucked your batteries to sleep. <laughs> but it would have been like cooler if it was actually like some kind of person. It was just a bunch of plastic. But at the time, it meant uh, so much to it, you. It meant so much. And I so then growing up, like got the Xbox and and Halo came out. And instead of hanging out with friends at lunch, I would just go in the basement at lunch and play Halo and then go back to school. And um, and I got really used to that. And I absolutely loved video games. And just like Dude. I'm in awe when I, when I when I get a new game like Apex Legends and, and I'm playing Zelda again. I just beat Breath of the Wild. And like I, I spent if anyone knows Breath of the Wild, I spent hours oh, just yeah. walking around, just cutting the grass with my sword. 
You can cut all the grass. You can cut down trees. That's all I was doing the whole time. That's I'm amazing. like, wow, the effects on the grass. Shing, whoa. And I'm just alone in my you condo. You really this- appreciate there's a book. Um, there's a book called like uh, uh, Linking – uh, linking psychology to to the world of Zelda. Whoa. Yeah, I have to. So it was written. It. I've had the the guy Wait, who wrote that. it. I've had it on my show. I will. I can also send you a link with that. Uh, Doctor Anthony Bean wrote it. If you look him up, it, it's one of the books that comes up. And it's every oh. chapter is about how a different Zelda uh, talks about a different point of psychology. So you need to read this like yesterday. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Did you did you always have your uh, dolls set up, or did you have stuffed animals? No, it was always Barbies. I was always Barbies. With Barbies. Yeah. But you had to make sure that they were in like an upright position when you left. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. if my sister, she would always have her stuffed animals so they could be able to breathe when she left. Of course. Because if you put them you... face down, right, they can't breathe. Of course, you so. wouldn't want that. Who would want that for a <laughs> Toy uh... Story? Messed a lot of kids up. That's what I'm gonna. Say. I think we'll we'll come back and do a chat just on Disney movies and the trauma. Oh, it created. The tra- I'm a huge Disney. All of my bows are Disney related, so that's. Oh, do you have we'll a favorite talk. movie? Favorite Disney movie? Favorite Disney movie is Tangled, and there's a lot of history. So, so my, uh, I'm sure chat can, watched, can talk to this. Tangled is the one with Rapunzel. Long hair. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I never watched it. Yeah. Shoot, is it on just, Netflix? It, I, it's not on Netflix, but it will be on Disney Plus, I'm sure. But oh, that's right. It, uh, it, it's so much of a part of my life. I had a, my mother kidnapped me. I'm not gonna go into the whole thing, guys, because everybody knows everybody knows uh but uh my mother yeah my mother kidnapped me and uh basically i say that like my husband rescued me from my tower and he ended up proposing at a lantern festival so it's like it's like it's a thing the whole thing. a lantern festival well you haven't seen tangled so that doesn't really connect with you no now, does it, it doesn't Mm-mm. shoot okay that's on my notes watch tangled thank you i'm gl- i'm giving you homework to do i love this it's the best amazing i know this is awesome Wow. You are the best. Okay, so can you answer some audience questions? Because we got a oh, lot to follow up on. I would love to. I would love to. Deadly, and you can answer them too. Yeah, Deadly Dragon. Welcome, welcome. Sinful Outcast. Thank you so much for the follow. We are Deadly Dragon. Deadly Dragon. <gasps> We're at 801. When we're done with Scott, I have to do a sticker giveaway. We'll do, actually, we'll do it tomorrow. 801. That's so cool. A sticker. What's 801? It, well, we have 801 followers since we just moved to Mixer. We're, we're wow. Re-getting. Photo, no, Sean. Thank you so much for the follow. Thank you. So we're, we're trying to regain, you know, bring everybody back and of bring course. in new people. And if you'd like stickers, I'll send you some. But I, I do a love... sticker giveaway for everybody. Like, so when they zone. follow, that means that they join the chat? The uh, no, follow means follow? They, will, they will now get notification. It's like subscribing on YouTube. They'll now Except get a notification. Except they actually get notification. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, some people, ba-da, ba-da, ba-da. Uh, sometimes some people say it doesn't work, so. Okay, wow. There's no, yeah, constantly bugs being fixed. Yeah. Squatch, thank you so much for the follow. You guys are awesome. All right, let's go Let's go to the audience. Uh, Soma had a really, really brilliant point. Money's never supposed to be a means to an end, said Bliffle. Uh, there's an emerging idea that being a billionaire is a form of mental illness, like a huge hoarding issue crossed with lack of connection type thing. I thought that Whoa, was Whoa, like, that's little, cool. Right? Interesting insight, yes. But you just look at someone like Bill Gates. I don't know if you've seen the Inside Bill's Mind Netflix thing. No. The guy gives Bill, like he's providing clean water and creating this technology. That's all he's doing with his time now. Wow. You know, um, if you're the right kind of billionaire, you do a lot of good for the right. world. Right. You a use it. You turn and around it, and then do something. Yeah. Like but yeah. it does take a super, like a weird human, like a really weird person yes. to have that, to get that much money and to work that hard and that long to continuing to accumulate wealth. That's a weird person. To that's be honest. a very, yeah, that's not anybody right? who just do that. That's true. No. But the, the Facebook ads will tell you differently. I get sure. these ads since I'm an entrepreneur. They're like, do you want to make $20,000 in one month? Right now. Yo, pew, 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 right, pew. right now. <laughs> Click the button. Yo, I'm in my garage. This is my Ferrari. If you guys didn't know, <laughs> all I... <laughs> Look at all these books I'm reading. Look at these books, guys. That guy. You know that guy. I yo, know exactly what you're talking about. Ty Lopez. Ty Lopez. Yes, yeah. Look yeah. at my Ferrari. Oh, Maserati. All, all these books I read and, and, and that got me this Ferrari. All you have to do is books. <laughs> And you're good. Oh, 
my gosh. Uh, good. Oh, that's, speaking of gamer, good OG by the way. YouTube stuff right there. Speaking of gamer, check out this VR headset. Oh, nerd. It's nuts. Yeah, oh, see, nerd. nobody knows this actually about me. You're the first person that really knows. Oh, I'm bringing out. Listen, I'm bringing you to Mixer. You shall come. You yes, that's right. I know. Should I? Should I start a? Mixer? Everybody. Well, you know, everybody's getting poached and moved into platforms. So. Right. Just saying. Who may who does anyone own Mixer? Like his own Mixer Microsoft. a Facebook own thing? Oh, Microsoft coming out of nowhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. From Windows 10, that's buggy like crazy for me right now. <laughs> Wait, really? I love Windows. So 10. buggy. I do too, but it's just so buggy right now. Uh okay, let's keep going down this list. This is fantastic. Uh, okay, yeah. I'd love to keep uh yeah, what else did they say? Okay, okay. Um doop, 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 doop. uh PMS Pilot Kitty, thank you so much for the host, sweetheart. It seems fun from the outside, I'm sure, but most people would be overwhelmed just being a millionaire. Never mind millionaire. Never mind multitudes beyond that. It's true. It's true. Yo, you're so, there, mo, mo money, mo problems. How white right. did I sound there? Right. But like seriously, if All you have YouTube that much, all the YouTube references, I love it. Uh -huh, if cool. you have, if you have that much money, man, that just think like. You keep making money, okay, that means you want to diversify. That means maybe you want to manage employees. That means you need an HR department. Then you have all these people on payroll that you yep. have to worry about. You're responsible for so many lives. Yep. Oh, my gosh. I don't know how people sleep at night when they own a business. It's unbelievable. Yep. Unbelievable. Yep. I worry enough about the online community I have. Right, right. Yeah, oh my, yeah. Well, I feel like it's it's, it's pretty businessy. And I, I think about it. It occupies a lot of my brain. Uh, it, oh, you know, I'm sure we could talk a lot about that. And yeah. I, I totally believe you 100% because it yeah. does for me too. Yeah. Uh, you're thinking about all kinds of stuff. Sorry, go ahead. No, you're fine. And Casper says, oh, I'm sure that's tough, but I would like to wing it. I think I could wing it. <laughs> uh, wing being, what? Being, a, mil being, being a, million? a millionaire. Yeah, yeah. All you have to do is promise me I get like a 10%. 10%? 10%? That's okay, a five. That's a lot. Maybe one if you're lucky. Shoot. All you need to do is have a million dollars in the bank, a 6% interest rate, and you just live off the 60K a year. Yeah, you're that's good. That's all. That's it. You're so, good. So, guys, why don't we just pool all, savings, pool all of our savings together? And communism. Yeah. <laughs> 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 this is how it started. This hey guys, I got an idea. I got, I got let's something. all pool our resources together. Yeah. Oh my god. Just yeah. this mixer group though. This this, this, this show, don't tell anyone else. Group. That's how it started too. Just this tribe, everyone. Just this tribe. Don't tell anyone else. <laughs> Uh, Soma QZ said, I disagree with social media and the internet being a negative factor in human connection. I have more real conversations with people who have differing viewpoints online. The stigma of being, quote, on your phone all the time as not connecting be feels disingenuous to me. The idea that people to need to get off social media because they need to disconnect from constant information being funneled to their brains and not being able to access it. Interesting. Interest. I just, I don't think we need to completely disconnect. I think, and I had just made a video about this today on Twitter. I just think everybody needs to take five minutes and just let your thoughts catch up. It's like a cache on your computer. You know when your computer slows down because totally. you have too many windows open and then yep. you start closing windows and suddenly your computer starts running fast? It's ex Your brain is exactly like that. You just need to take a second and wait for all the cache to catch up. Exactly. And then like exactly. I just did, a, I just put up a vlog and I was at uh, in Halliburton, Ontario, way up north, and the, there was a lake. And I, I disconnect when I go up north and, and go camping and all that. I don't even bring my phone. But here's the thing. Depends if you need it. So the ultimate question is, how do you gauge whether social media and using your phone is good enough? Well, how do you feel after you use it? A lot of people who scroll through Instagram will be like, yeah, I don't, I kind I don't of feel, feel worse good. after. Yeah. yeah, I don't feel yeah. good. Well, ding, 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 ding. Right. If, you, if the person who commented has built great relationships, right. friendships, has meaningful conversations. Oh my gosh. Hey, let me tell you, you're using it the right way. Right. So I think that's fantastic. Fantastic. Right. For right. me personally, I got to, I have to unplug for me. I have to unplug. That's true. That's true. I, that's I, just, I love all your disclaimers. It's a, no, it's very thoughtful. Thank you. It's all, it's mental health is purely individualized. It okay. That's so, what makes it so complicated. Yeah. So here's the deal. Um, you know, we we try to say mental health is health, which is which is true to a point. The brain's an organ, blah blah blah. But the way it's treated and talked about, so you go to your doctor for a broken leg. Most places in the world treat a broken leg the same way. Okay, you set it, cast yes. it, right? So yes. your with bones are health, all kind of the same, right? Yeah, with mental health, depends on the individual. You don't go in for a broken leg and be like, so what was your childhood like before I fix your leg here? 
any traumatic experiences when you were growing up? Like, no, they know what to do with the broken leg. Mental health is really individualized. So anyone their personalities commenting, are so diverse. Exactly. So, yeah. Anyone talking and commenting, it's like, actually, no, that's not the, the case for me. I'm like, okay. I can't say no, anything. No, that's about uh, but I love that's learning. Like, okay. I, I eat that up. I love learning that. Like, how did that Same. work for you? Oh my God. That's yeah. all. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Yeah. I, I love that. Oh, for sure. That's the coolest part. Right. I'm like, that made me sick, but that worked for you. That's so cool. That's so, that's Let's like, talk about <sighs> it. Yeah. 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 That's so awesome. Uh, okay. Zuki says, my dad has a condition that has pretty much destroyed his nerve system and therefore he has chronic depression. He has to take meds for life. Yeah. See, that's one of those like, yeah mind-blowing cases exactly uh the the physical people with um autoimmune disorders as well yes uh, and causing inflammation we thought of depression as inflammation of the brain and body so like if you have physical issues too even arthritis um physical pain in the body like can cause depression seriously because if you're in chronic pain your quality of life has sometimes gone down the the gutter mm -hmm. and you you get depressed because of that there's so much connection so mm -hmm. uh, an issue with the nervous system yeah like so many so many different scenarios with how how that can be chronic for sure psycho thank you thank you so much for the host i appreciate you uh, Selma Kizzi says, my best friend does great on meds. She go gets to a point where she's functioning great and feels great, and then she stops taking them. She feels good, then back to square one as she's down downward spirals. I mean, that yeah, that's the case for quite a few people, absolutely. That's the case for the few people go off cold turkey and are just yes. fine. Yeah, we um, the you, you know you need a, a game plan for sure. And, and I, I tried going off just like you. I tried growing off three times in the last 10 years and almost died. Yeah. Like it, it's it's the detox part for sure. But I didn't have a game plan both times and everything kind of stayed the same. Um, but geez, if they're working for you and, and the side effects aren't killing you, then by all means, you know. Bliffle, Splick, all means. Bliffle Splick says CBC Heart. They are also Canadian. Uh, hey! Oh, you want to see? Oh, wait, wait. Will this work? I don't know. Oh, oh Toronto, hey, Canada! Oh, Canada! Thank you. Um, Thank you so I much. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, Num Num says I have completely disconnected from Facebook and now only use Twitter for everything. Then Instagram and Snapchat for talking to friends. Yeah, that's figuring out what's the perfect cocktail for you. For me, it's Discord and Twitter. And if there's too much Twitter, I shut it down and go directly to Discord and call it a day. I just can't do Facebook. Instagram is for me seeing where my friends are. But I don't mm. follow anybody I don't know because, like, any inspirational account or anything like that. Right. You don't follow the billionaires going like, yo, welcome to my garage. Look at my Ferrari. You don't right. follow. Them. No, I don't follow those people who are like, boss bitch, look at yeah. me with my. Oh. Yeah. No, I can't oh. do it. I can't. I'll I'm going to throw yeah. oh. You just have to you just have to think your way to the top. Like, yeah, I can, no. None of That's that. That's so none bad. None of that. None of that. Wait, what did the what did the what was the comment there? I was going to say something. Uh, what was the last I have one completely you just disconnected read? from Facebook and now only use Twitter and every and oh. everything then Instagram, Snapchat for talking about. Right. So you know what's interesting? This is another individualized thing. This is the the chat title should be people are individuals. Um Twitter, I absolutely hate. And that's where I feel the worst because really yeah my community the community isn't on twitter that i have and oh. the news i see and the trending topics make me feel like wow the world's coming to an end uh-huh the the funniest thing is i used to work at twitter so that's kind of funny um but it's it was called i saw a really funny quote it's like twitter's the bathroom wall of the internet uh, yeah. like I every mean, yeah accurate. yeah but but <laughs> if you found like again it's how you use it and there's sweet communities on twitter and yeah it's it's, it's communities follow. and and curating uh, yeah right yeah yeah so again i don't like it i i'm a uh, am more instagram for sure and and discord yeah i can't do oh. instagram because of all the inspirational shit that's why i don't post I on get it. it i i post on there i'm not going to pretend i don't i do post on there but i really have kept it as like this is what I feel like posting today. This is what inspires me today. And that's where I put that. Like it has a very yes, specific purpose. Totally. Yeah. But I get it. It meant as far as the comparison game is concerned with social media, Facebook and Instagram, um, like talk about not being satisfied and content with your life. If you're scrolling through Instagram, 
seeing that that boss bitch yeah. and seeing that person in their new car i just got married i got the new house i got yep. the new condo yeah because like, nobody wow. nobody posts here's me walking outside and if they did you'd be like oh that's boring you scroll right past that you know yeah yeah oh, you that. average piece of shit like yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? what what i need this perfectly placed food i don't need to look at your trash yeah right i yeah. know and like if people have babies right so they'll post it i'm like show me a shitty diaper show me you up at 2 a.m yeah. changing the baby's diaper yes but no they they'll do the pose photo with the cute baby which is i get it but right. it's not real right it's not it's, it's, it's not and as long as you keep that in mind it's on honestly it's it, it can be yeah. harmless but if you yeah, and like you said it, like instagram is your jam but like for me i can't get past that and twitter is my jam mind-blowing anyway oh my gosh we are opposites but also so alike in so many ways i too. know i know it's great it's so cool uh Mupala says i've used hyper vigilance to figure out what actions in my community i can help with so that's pertaining to when i was talking about my anxiety uh bliffle split said twitter just oof <laughs> just oof yeah yeah uh, yeah it's an interesting platform that is for sure yeah that's one way to put it for sure um yeah bromopar says bullshit i believe my toys came to like long life long before toy story came out all right all right i mean i think i had that Toy Story would not have been a movie if that wasn't a thing multiple kids thought together, right? Like Yes, true. Yeah. And I can't believe how much that changed the game. Did you see Toy Story 4? Oh yeah. Have you did you know? And okay, so I have to nerd out about this. So Please. there is this really, really famous swooping shot that is done in like a few movies that they were able to recreate in animation in Toy Story 4. So there's a scene where they're on top of the carousel to uh woody and, and yep Bobby. i know that yep and at the end yeah swoop in and they sw and that's a shot that's usually done with like a rig with wires the camera's on one and it's swooping so they were able to recreate that in animation by by programming a camera like that whoa that is so cool what? Didn't they do a, there there was a whole video on how they did the animation for toy story 4 or something a video really it's mind-blowing that is so cool yeah. did you find it was a darker kind yeah, it of was, it was it was i'm darker. gonna be honest it, i didn't love it my husband absolutely loved it we walked okay. out with two very different opinions on the movie got it yeah. okay yeah oh did you see joker i did not see joker yet please no spoiler i know i need to see it uh, I think I'm gonna leave it for DVD. As soon as it comes out on DVD, I'm gonna like watch it ASAP because awesome. I need to yep. like watch it in the comfort of my own home. Otherwise, I'm gonna scream and throw popcorn when they represent something <laughs> incorrectly. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. not how it is. That's no. not. That's not even. Not even. Did you see it? Yo, not even, guys. <laughs> I was sit down. Um, I saw it, and yeah. I'm gonna see it again. Yeah, it was amazing. Come now, to Jersey, we'll see it together. Hey, oh, not a bad idea. It's not a bad <laughs> idea. What's the drive to Jersey? I used to go there all the time for work. Are you? I think it's, it's like seven or eight hours. It's not. It's not short. Because the airport is literally right outside my door. Across, oh, on the well, water, the airport by me goes, is like thirty minutes. But at Newark? Yeah. Newark? Newark's yeah. not far. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's like a $200 plane. We could actually make this happen. We'll figure it out. I would actually love to. Dude. Your weather is just as bad as ours here. Yeah, so, so you got nothing. We got nothing. I, I can't appeal to you with the weather either. Uh, yeah, right? I just need a good Newark hotel to stay at. Uh, there's hotels around me that are better than any Newark hotel. So <laughs> we'll Okay, sweet. That. Our Airbnbs we'll you, in New Jersey. Yeah, a little bit there. better than a Newark hotel. Right. Um, what other comments you got? Okay, okay. Yeah, let's let's go. Uh, that girl Bryce says, you will love how they portrayed mental health. In jo That's what I've heard. And I've in read Joker? a bunch of essays. Yes. And I read a bunch of essays on it on how good of a job they did and, and where they missed and stuff. And it was awesome. Here's the deal with Joker, though, in like every movie. Joker, like, uh, jo what is it? Joaquin Phoenix? Yeah. Is it? Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix? Yeah. Is that how you pronounce it? Anyways, yeah, that's the, how the you Joker. pronounce it, but I don't know that yeah. that's him. That's him? He, okay. Yeah, it's him. But like, amazing actor. He's probably going to get an Oscar for sure, at least a nomination. But it's so much easier to act in something like that when you have an amazing director and cinematographer yeah, and director yes. of photography and the makeup and the wardrobe. It's just like, it makes it so much easier. And the editing that happens with that, unbelievable. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but the whole performance, though, regardless of the editing, like, jeez. That's what go I see heard. It tonight. Cancel the stream. Go to the movies. Go, All go, right, go. bye. I was going to go watch oh, The Little wait. Mermaid live after this, but I guess I'm watching Joker. Little Mermaid live? Uh, it's on ABC. I don't, I don't know if you guys get it, ABC. I might. I, I think I do, actually. I have an antenna. Okay. I get channels from New Jersey, actually, in Buffalo. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, yeah. so uh, ABC, The Little Mermaid Live, It's they're, like, doing it as a musical. Oh, cool. Yes, yes. I haven't seen that movie in so long. A-B-S-E-A. Oh, Casper. Oh, Casper. That's bad. Uh, what? Well, he's A-B-C-S-E-A because of the mermaid. It was a pun. A-B-C-S-E-A. Well, he's saying instead of ABC, like the letters ABC, he's saying A B S E A. I wow, I feel very, very dumb right now. It's am okay. I, why am I it's, not it's getting okay. this? You're not it's a sea mermaid, like the ocean, like the oh, sea. Oh, oh my god. All right, well you can come back whenever you're ready. <laughs> Oh, I'm so, so that was a slow one. Yeah, okay. John Stamos is the cook, and Queen Latifah is Ursula, and it's like, it's supposed to be really good. Whoa, that's so cool. Yeah. John Stamos. Have to pay for ABC in Canuckland. Yeah, I figured it was something not, not bueno. Canuckland. Yeah. Where are they from in Canada? This is, uh, wait, Bliff, I, I always forget. I know it's on the West Coast. Vancouver? I want to say it's around there. Edmonton? Edmonton? Alberta? I think Alberta. That sounds, Alberta? That sounds similar. Edmonton, similar. Alberta? That sounds similar. Ah. But we don't need to give away their exact location. Nobody go oh, find Oh, yes. Them. Yeah, seriously. Uh, Critwich, and your street, please. Uh, Critwich says, that's the most backhanded location sales pitch I've ever heard about uh, me pitching New Jersey to you. Oh, my gosh. Yes, what is something amazing that happens in New Jersey that doesn't happen anywhere else? Oh, Ooh. Lord. No, I, guess, I know, that's I tough. I guess f- football games, I think. What else we got? We do a lot of good apple picking. I'll ask my husband. Apple <laughs> picking. Hey, that's cool. I got you know, the accents. You know, um... Solving sleet, not the accents. No. What? 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 Oh, I thought I you were thinking. Another... Oh, oh, no, no, no. 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 Say another cool thing about that's why I kept going to Newark for work because uh, you know the audiobook company Audible? Yes. That's where their head office is. Yes, it is. And it's in Newark. It's right in Newark. Right in Newark. So that's something cool, man. Booming industries. That's true. That's Booming. true. Booming. That's true. But I heard Audible is a terrible place to work for. I didn't know that. Oh. Uh, I didn't work. I was just doing a, their ads and stuff. Got it. Oh, cool. That's really cool. Um. Okay. I think that's... Uh, Bromo Bar said, great news for you. 60K a year ain't enough to live out by my way. I mean that's that's fair. Sixty K doesn't always. Where they're out in L A. So. Oh, L A. Actually, well, Toronto's more expensive. Toronto and New York are pretty comparable now. Really. Toronto def- really? Oh yeah, you can't get a condo. This is like a four hundred square foot, no, five hundred square foot condo. You can't get anything now for under like twenty two hundred, twenty three hundred a month. Yeah. So take that, L.A. Actually, L.A. is probably the same. L.A. is probably more. right about there, yeah. Yeah, but they get a beach. <laughs> uh, Num Num says, Facebook was so upsetting to me because of all the bad news and literally everyone brags about everything. I mean, that's true. That's Facebook is written form bragging. That's, okay, yeah. here's, here's the question. Do yes. you think that there will be a generation that rejects you know social media altogether no and no no you think I it'll think, always be a thing i think certain you think forms it will just social, evolve i think it'll evolve and i think certain forms of it might be like maybe facebook will die down i don't know they have a lot invested in it like they the do. government so i don't know that's the whole government conspiracy we're not going to go into but right I don't know, but like maybe Instagram will die or Snapchat will die. You know, like yeah. they might like turn over, but social media in some form is staying. I think they're just going to keep changing. Like, honestly, the future, we could talk about this for a long time. The future is VR and augmented reality. Like, that is the f- Like, we're just going to be having this conversation. We'll just be chilling on the couch here. You'll have like the hologram, or we'll be doing a virtual room. Everyone will be in the room. Yeah. It, that'll good. definitely happen. And you can already do it. If everyone had a headset right now, we could do our own chat room and we could all be sitting in there and we'd have our avatar and stuff. Right. But yeah, we could do that. But it's, it's, that's the future, man. 
Oh my gosh. I'm humans, scared and excited at the same humans time. Humans have been trying to not be in the place that they're in for millennia. So yes. I yes, yes. Yes. Do you think we are living in a simulation right now? Oh, right now? Like the Matrix kind of? Nah. Yeah. Nah. Nah. I mean, <laughs> we're living in a simulation in that nobody wants to like be where they are. Like, you know, like be present. Right. But uh, not not really. No. But do you know the Elon Musk's argument for why we're in a simulation? I kn- I yes, go on, go on. Yeah. Oh no, he believes that since we're going like getting closer to VR and tapping into the subconscious and doing all that, well, we're already here. Think about other other um, civilizations, thousands of years ahead of us. They've already done this, and they've already created us in their simulation. So, like uh-huh. other people already beat us to it, and now they're just. This is all just a simulation. They've you know, created I, this new consciousness. Dax Shepard had a really good contra to that that I kind of go by and that really I think that I subscribe to now, which is that sounds really great when you're Elon Musk and you're like, this has got to be a simulation. This is amazing. But like the guy in Detroit who's working at the GM factory and making minimum wage, he doesn't think it's a simulation. Oh my God, that's so true. Or it's a really, I really crappy that. one. You know. I love yeah, that. Yeah. That's yeah. like a, a very good argument for a lot of the bullshit I see around motivation mm. and getting people to, you know, just think differently or just do this and do yeah. this. Yeah, well, and that, yes. And that goes back to what we were talking about before you joined, which is like we can't, a hungry person, a full person cannot imagine somebody who's hungry, right? Exactly. So, yeah, and that, the, the that's hungry, a whole conversation. And the hungry person just wants food right they on a hungry person does not give a shit about climate change they right. don't they they need to eat first we right. get people fed we mm-hmm. get people good jobs and we get them then where they can have the capacity to, to think Maslow's about larger hierarchy issues of needs yeah exactly yeah. but we got to feed people first right and i just changed my linkedin to motivational speaker today yeah because uh it's but it, it still feels weird because like I guess it's motivational, but not in the cringy sense. Right. So I'm I'm still like You're I don't know if you struggled with that. Trying to find an alternative form, alternative term for yeah, it. Yeah, it was mental yeah. health speaker, but then you know Google SEO, you got to play the game. Um, but I was wondering, have you ever struggled with like how do how do you define or label yourself? Talk show host. Talk show. I host. love that. Yeah. So I've said mental health talk show host, but I've sometimes just chopped that mental health part off and just said talk show host. That's cool. Oh, oh, man. oh, live great. talk show host. Live, oh, it's yeah. even better. Yeah, that's important. Does live. anyone else do this? Uh, a few people. A few, there's a, quite a few people over on Twitter, but the to- this format is mine. I mean, not like I didn't like patent it, but like people doing interviews exclusively, like repeatedly uh, for their show. That's that's. I don't know another mental health streamer who does interviews every Tuesday or once a week. That's that's my jam. But does anyone else do that? Like just about anything that oh, has sure. people on oh, okay yeah go check out if you go and does it to... live they do it live yeah go check out the just chatting section in in twitch and i'm sorry in advance because you'll find a lot of stuff you don't want to see and then if you if you can get to talk show in there you'll you'll see some cool stuff yeah oh yeah I think, but that's no, where it all sits or a... there is also category podcasts and talk shows so there's that oh okay cool yeah, yeah this is such a, twitch, a cool yeah. idea Oh. Such a cool idea, man. Oh, thank you. Way to go. Thank you. Yeah, star for I me. Need, I do need that chair, though. I need a better chair. Yeah. You need a better chair. I terrible. mean, I can give you a discount. That's all I got. I've They've upgraded their chairs, and I've been trying to weasel my way into getting a newer one. <laughs> Honestly? What, you have a disc, like affiliate stuff? Yeah. Sponsor? Yeah. Oh, if my you, gosh. Yeah. I, I, I actually will look into this because oh, I was... Holy guacamole. If you go on to Mixer.com slash anxiety that I sent you before... Yep. And you, oh, I did not upload it here. I'm a liar. All right, I'm adding it to the list of things I have to send. I think it's on my Twitch, though. Hold on. Twitch.com slash anxiety. I think that has my affiliate link. Oh. Twitch.com slash anxiety, and then you scroll down, and then Uh-oh. you scroll down, and then OPC, support your game. Oh, my gosh, wait. I'm looking at... I'm I'm now seeing the chat and everything because I'm watching our stream right now. Are you watching our stream? Because that's not what I'm hearing. What do you mean? 
Oh, that's not. Oh, I have something else going. Okay, so you're watching our stream now. Got it. Yeah, be the hashtag be the light. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, so be the light is the idea that when the world is dark, we go out there and we create that light ourselves. We serve as Whoa. an example of what it means to help others and to treat others the way we wish that we were treated. Wow. Damn, I love that. Ah, the whole thing is a little, a little Gandhi esque, but yeah. No, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah. I love this format and everything. So are oh. we boring people now? I'm just like really. No, looking. no, no. We can, dude. This is, this is, this is, yeah. <gasps> uh, okay. So then we talked about Toy Story a bunch, and people were asking about that. By the way, exclamation the letter Q. If you guys have questions for Scott before we we can leave. Um, Bliffle, wait. Bliffle Splick made a joke about Canada that I don't want to miss. Um, oh, I see A B C now. I get it with the C. Yes, yes it's better if you see it visually. Funny. Yes, there you go. <clears throat> I love it. Hold on. All right, everybody. I posted Scott's link, so be sure to follow him everywhere. 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 Trust me, it's not cringy bullshit. You're not gonna get lame. No, motivated I mean, posters. I don't think in the past hour they've gotten that. So I think, yeah. Okay, got to keep it real. That's what you do here. It's like just let's just keep it real and have an honest discussion. That's what I'm I try trying, to not do. Not trying to impress anybody. I think people hear the word interview, and not a lot of them react the way you do. A lot of them go, okay. What are your questions? And then they just respond yeah. to the question. You know, some people. I can't have a just time. do that. I'm yeah. a way better host, I think, uh, than a interviewee. That's why I love like that you're allowing me to ask you questions too. I think it's great. Loop asks, how would you say someone start sharing on social media about mental health? How how should they start sharing? Yeah, how would you recommend somebody start sharing their mental health on social media? So for the longest time. Uh, I was, I had a different Twitter handle when I was at Twitter, when mm -hmm. I was working at Twitter, I had my Scott St. Marie handle. Then I was hiding all my mental health content because mm -hmm. I was afraid I would somehow get like fired or they would find my shit and not mm -hmm. like it. Mm -hmm. so I'd say first, before you share it, make sure that if like pretend worst case scenario, if someone found out, if your workplace found out, what right. would be the consequence? Some, sometimes that's a real thing and it sucks, but sometimes that's a real thing. Um, how should you start sharing? Like what platform do you think? Well, I, I think it's, yeah, I think it's more like how should you go about sharing about, right, Moop, if you want to exact. Thankfully, I got hired through a special program for my disability. Uh, yeah. Or what would you, or what would you like to see people sharing more of in the mental health community, I guess? Oh, that's great. So, okay, so. Um, and you can answer this too, Marie. So I think that there, you don't need to look long and hard to find mental health stories out there sure. and advocates. Oh my gosh, there are thousands and thousands and thousands doing some great work, sharing stories. What I don't think we share enough of as a, a community is actual actions that we take on the daily basis to manage these things. So like we talk about, here's my story with depression. I went through this, I went through this. Yes. Okay, but now how? what are you doing? Like if it's just medication, man, even just sharing that right. can help people right. can help people with the stigma. Mm -hmm. but, but saying, okay, well, this is what I do. Like every morning I get up, I look outside, I stretch my shoulders and now I have a cup of coffee. And after I have the cup of coffee, like talk about your routine. Sometimes you do CBT, sometimes you do gratitude workshops. Sometimes, you know, every single day you need to do this many push-ups. I don't know like what you do to actually cope with these things. I know that's really simple, um, but talk about, geez, what therapy has done for you, different thoughts that comfort you in the midst of tragedy. I think not enough, not enough, of, us, not enough of us are sharing how we're actually doing, how we're managing these things. What yeah. do you think, Marie? I think that that's a lot more helpful indeed. Uh, I do feel like a lot of people are venting and maybe – uh, like venting off and using it as a place to vent their frustrations that they can't talk to other people about their mental health otherwise and that's part of the issue with stigma in general and there's a there's use in that as well but I do agree that there's not enough actionable items but I also get scared and this is me a little bit being gatekeepy for sure but I also get scared people sometimes give off their experiences as advice and that stuff scares me yep yes. totally so what kind of so there'd be like on on my group private and any comments i love i absolutely love how you said 
that you don't name specific medications. I think that I have the exact same rule in my community. I'm like, share if you take medication, cool, but don't tell us what brand, how many milligrams, because then people start comparing. Yes. And, and so then being I think like, oh, that's I take amazing. less, I take more. Yeah, it's for yeah, all of whoa, those reasons. Yeah, whoa, whoa, no, no, no. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I think if you're, that's why on my channel since day one, I've never given advice. I talk about coping skills, what I do, but I say, I frame it as invitations. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, this is what worked for me. I'm inviting you. Uh, and the great thing about invitations is you can piss on it, throw it in the garbage, or you can take it if you want. So that. So I never tell anyone, listen, you're depressed. All right, five steps. This is what you need to do. Okay. <laughs> like there's a, no way, no way. So I think like uh, sharing experiences is amazing. But again, just a disclaimer saying like in my experience, comma, then you can go on a rant, right. but just knowing that it's yours and it works for you. And then not mixing up things as scientifically sound when they're not and coming up with some you know diet plan for someone sure and you do your you don't know shit right you're just like oh i saw this article once yeah. and it said that uh, if you eat seven grapes it decreases your feelings right, <laughs> right. No, no but way. i've seen that and it's very scary I know. it it's is it is scary. you can't do that you can't right. yeah i even get scared when there's prof and i'm this is this is not just crapping on um mental mental health advocates this is i've seen professionals give out advice online and i'm like you don't know where this is going you don't how do you not know right. that responsibly you can't just throw out advice and then you know we'll see who's gonna you that's like even yeah. scarier that's no yeah. you're right and i i sometimes i do shit on advocates too um for the same reason but also okay so it, it has to do with the person sharing the information for sure. Sure, sure but it also has to do with and which we're not teaching children enough of is thinking critically mm -hmm. and how to take something apart mm -hmm. so you can't take everything as scientifically sound and that it's going to work like where's the skepticism mm -hmm. in the world today do you know david suzuki does mm -hmm. that name ring a bell mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. david suzuki is like the one thing that's missing in school that isn't taught is teaching skepticism mm -hmm. so we need to ask people to ask questions, tell people to ask questions, like it, think critically about what you're reading. Okay, where was this sourced? Okay, uh, let me go to the journal article. Who wrote this? Are the, is this fundamental? How many people were actually in this study? Now it's difficult too, because geez, who has the time to open up the journal article, look at the science, uh, dissect what right, doctors right, right. and psychiatrists were involved in nutritionists. And I totally get that. But it's like, I don't think there's anything so, so profound. Like really, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. not much has changed in, in, in how we cope with these things. That if you see something, uh, one food to never eat or else you'll die right now. Right, it's, right. Or it'll make you anxious forever. Be like, okay, this person, and even if it came from a doctor, be like, fuck you. Like straight up, like, yeah. God, take care. Like be be skeptical and and know your, I don't know, just know you're worth more than this bullshit that you come across. Because I hate it, and it's just like us. We were talking about entrepreneur stuff. You want to make twenty grand a day, and, and I'm just like, fuck you. Like uh, these people who are just trying to make money yes. based on oh some some anxiety program or some it's not even program. because i've read uh, those blog posts that are like here's how to become a big blogger overnight and those yeah. blog posts are manufactured this person doesn't give a shit about whether or not you're going to be a good blogger <laughs> they're not passionate about it what they right. are passionate about is they know four thousand people a day whatever search for the words how to be a good blogger and they found seo on that and then they just typed out bullshit out of their butts and then yes. that's it. And then that's what's going to pop up in your Google feed. And that's how they make money. So they so don't true. care. They don't They don't care. And they're not going to provide you with any information that's substantial. It's just text on a page that happens to correspond to Google's SEO. That's I. It. That's so true. And unfortunately, it's like, that sounds really bitter, but yeah. No, but it's, it's that's the tough part about Google. Like, what is it? Something like 90% of people who search for something only stay on the first page of Google. Yeah. Like yeah. no one goes to the second page. So if you're on that first page, it doesn't matter if it's the best content. Yeah. You just somehow, A, you got there first, a lot of it. So what, what Google used to do when they first came out is they used to uh, rank like alphabetical order. So if you were a company like ABC Insurance, 
your ranking's still great just because you started with an right. A. Right. Like, damn, they've changed a lot, but it's still not the best content that comes first. You have like backlinking, you have text keywords, all of these things. And I honestly, I, I hate that, as you just said, it's like people selling a product, not because they care. I get it. People need to pay for their LA condo. You need to pay for your Newark place, but at what expense, right? If you're putting out a good product and you truly believe it, then that's one thing. And I'd stand by that any day. I'm like, well, let's get this notice. But if it's true garbage, offers no value, no utility, utility to anyone, and you're making money from it and just sucking people's souls, I don't know how you sleep at night, man. Yep. Yep. And that's the truth, everybody. And I <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, that was that was great. Somebody asked, "Did you just channel Peter from Family Guy or what?" I think I think he might have at one point, but I already forgot when. But I think we did a lot of impressions tonight. I love Family Guy so much. It's the f you probably subconsciously I... channeled it. You didn't even yeah, know. probably. <laughs> I was about to do an impression. I can't do a Peter. <laughs> to anyone uh so like you've joined i've joined my local government gone through special hiring programs lots of therapy exposure Mubalu will share that i think sharing that in blog posts is very helpful and just making sure that you so that they're found making sure you word them in a way that's like uh how do i uh how do i get involved in men mental health through my local government right like that that's yeah. great yeah and especially uh people not knowing that there are government programs out there right that's yeah, huge. That's huge move. The you thing can, is, you can make I'm a huge difference. Yeah, and I'm sure you've you can relate to this. Like people dealing with mental illness, the, the hardest part is like, what do I do? Where do I go? What's available? And to know that there's resources out there funded for you, like by the government, that'd be a huge asset to people. I think that's great. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Any more things? Any no. more things? What is it? Almost ten o'clock? No, we ran out of things, and it's almost ten o'clock, and and you are absolutely wonderful. I don't well, even know where to begin to thank you. You're absolutely this, delightful. Well, I obviously would love to share this with uh, my community because yes. you're the coolest. Or oh. oh, you know what we have to do too? You have to come on, and we need to do a live stream or a talk with you. And you oh, you need to come on the po my podcast. That's oh. probably what we should do. You have a podcast. I got a podcast. That's where I shine. Not I shine because I think I'm really, really cool. I shine that um, I'm just you're, very interested yourself. in yeah. other people. No, yeah. yeah, in other people. I like to ask questions. I get so involved and love learning just like you do. So if you came on, I can finally ask you all the questions that I want. You wanted. didn't get to nearly ask me enough questions. And I'm sitting here. No, you asked me a lot of questions. <laughs> I didn't get to ask you about your childhood, at what point your so-and-so abused you. I didn't get to ask any of that. Who abused me? No, I'm, I'm kidding. And oh also, my God. Those are also not questions that I had for Scott. So we're good. Oh God, we're good. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh shit. That's funny. Uh, but yeah. No, but yeah, we have to do this again, oh man. Goodness. And then in person too. Yes. Um, but yeah, I'll share this with my commune. Yeah. Let me, so commune. I'm recording this to go up on YouTube. So let me send you upload that file to YouTube and then, uh, I will share with you the direct, like I will also upload it to Google and share that with you. Like, Do you Google have, wait, do you have a YouTube channel? You upload to YouTube so you just have the link. No, I'll upload to, to YouTube, but I will also separately send you the original file so you can oh, do whatever cool. you want with it. Take the audio. I didn't know you had a YouTube channel. Well, it's not a big one. It's like 200 maybe subscribers. That's awesome. I, it just literally loads, uh, it just literally has these episodes. I don't edit them. I don't do anything. I just load them up. So it's very low That's effort. Sweet. Yeah, it's not, so it's nothing I ever like put in a tons of effort into. There's a few helpful videos. Like we did a, I did a video with a bunch of streamers on how to get through pre-stream anxiety. What do you do to get yourself to streaming? Like, so that's Whoa. cool. Like I'll do that once in a while, but it's not like a channel that I actively cultivate. I probably should be doing yeah. Hey, man, you can go to bed and say, oh, I could have done more today, which is what we spoke about. You know, I wasn't, I could have been more productive. Should I watch, should I watch the live Little Mermaid or should I do more work? Huh. Huh. That's an 
yeah, right. Huh? So you could always do more, but you're doing a an amazing job, man. Oh my I gosh, think. look at you! Like literally, the inspired me. There are like five people that I can name that when I started my journey, I was like that guy. I'm gonna I'm gonna take what he's doing and do my own thing, but I'm gonna be inspired by that. You are one of those five people. Wow, dude, I'm That's serious. So awesome! I'm I can't serious. believe we didn't do this before. Though. I well, I was terrified because you're like cool and stuff, and I no. don't know if I'm cool. So I gotta, I gotta <laughs> wait. I gotta wait till my coolness. You levels are go up. so no, your coolness levels have hit the top. <laughs> That's it. I peaked. Yeah, That's there's it. only no. You're <laughs> like the people in in high school that peaked that their coolness. Now there's only a way but down. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh um, gosh. but yeah, we to have to, to oh, I know we, we, this has already been what? Two hours. This has been two hours. And I like, I wanted to stop you at an hour and then I was just like, I'm just no. going to see what I can get away with it. Eh, eh. Well, uh, <laughs> we eh, just eh. kept talking. <laughs> we could go for so much longer. Dude. Um, I have actually, here's a question for your group and for you too. I'm doing, um, if you haven't watched it, I did a, a TEDx talk you last year. You did a TEDx talk last yeah, year. Yeah, and I'm doing another one Get next out. month. But wow. the due date, the due date for the topic and the whole talk is on Friday. Okay. And I don't even have a topic yet. Ooh. So any any uh, like any ideas? Do you guys have any ideas? And then I he's gonna to help hook help me related. up. He's gonna hook me up with the next TEDx talk, guys. That's, Are that's you kidding me? Doing obviously you haven't uh, does does uh, new jersey have one uh, new jersey has one that i pitched myself to and the response i got was uh that sounds really great that sounds uh that sounds wonderful and we're very glad you pitched to us but we've almost selected our topics and we cannot use yours we've almost selected our topics what kind of backhanded slap is that right who was this person? I, I have the email. I like I posted it to a few people. I was like, how do you even word this so backhandedly? That so, wasn't like, was it uh was it a um automated email? No, no, it was not an automated email. That was, was written from, by a human. It was written by a I can I can forward it to you. It's a real email. Whoa, that's so strange. It was the most mind because I was like, wait, so you like you complimented me, but then you also but you didn't finish picking out what? It's like it's like those I don't know rejection letters. Yes. Like, hey, on behalf of the university of blah, yes. blah, blah, you are your application was fantastic. Thank you so much for applying. Unfortunately. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. But this had an extra slap to it because it's not like oh, but we've already selected our candidates and we did not go through with you. It was yeah. We're not even done really picking people, but, but we, we already, already know. <laughs> That's, That's so you. bullshit. <laughs> right. Okay, um, if you were to do a talk, yeah. I sorry, no, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. No. When you are going to do your sure. talk, if this is if garbage, when you are going to do your TEDx talk, what do, what do you want it to be about? What what do you want to talk about? I want to talk about how live streaming is the next medium through which we connect with uh, with people and their mental health. Oh my goodness! That's the topic I pitched. That's and it's here. It's on tele. It's here. So if anybody takes it, there's video proof. Nobody yeah, takes yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. It's anyway, so true. Anyway, Marie, copyright stamp. Yeah, there you no, go. Right that's there. so good. I that's like a title I could already see searching TED talks. Like that's so. That's You're very so, sweet. Thank you. No, Thank no, you. it's so. What am I trying to say? Not futuristic. What's a better word for futuristic? It's so. Um, Thought provoking, so timely, timely, ahead like that, of your time, says Mupalu. Visionary. Okay, guys, visionary. Visionary. Com- no, take oh, that. Com- what's that up down. with that compliment? Twenty more notches. Visionary is great. You guys, twenty more notches down. Well, you uh, could ask your your viewers too. Like, what would they want to talk about if they were given a platform and a stage? Yes. Uh, what would they want to talk about? Because that's always something I I love to ask when I go to schools. I bring my camera and I like. Do a vlogs for the kids, and I'm like, all right, if this many people are watching on my YouTube, because I'm not allowed to post it because they're kids and right, 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 get right. this. But I'm like, what would you want to tell the world? And a lot of them are just like, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but some say such cute things. They're just like, keep being yourself. Oh, like, oh you got me. <laughs> no matter what anyone else says, just keep being you i'm like oh that's awesome oh my god that's amazing 
Yeah. Loop, loop. That's really cute too. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Mifliffle Splick asked a question. Asked a question. And I do so I have a I have a topic for you. Uh uniting how to you unite unite people using modern media. Mm, that's awesome. Something like that. Something yeah. I'm thinking something about the, the community uh um, yeah, 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 yeah. this. Because yeah. what you're doing Oh, and, oh, oh, okay, wait, I'll... I have it. Sorry, sorry, I have Boom. it. Um uh modern um modern group therapy brought into or modern group uh com- modern peer support modern peer support brought into the online world oh that's nice because that's what you're doing yeah no that's exactly what it is so then people would argue okay what's so special about it though because there are forums there are other types of uh, chat rooms and things online. Yeah, but, but then that... that's when you talk about the the interaction and everything. Right, mm-hmm. right, and the live streams that you do. A lot of the chat rooms don't have video content, and mm-hmm. video is so crucial. Mm-hmm. Even if you're even in this setting, like people are typing, but they're seeing your reaction right, right. away in real time. Right, that's so cool. I remember uh, this guy used to follow when I first started YouTube. He he inspired me to start a YouTube channel. His name was Elliot Hulse. Mm-hmm. And I watched one of his live streams and I commented. This was back in like 2011. Mm-hmm. And I, co- I commented on his live stream and he responded to me. I freaked out. I'm like, he just said my name. He just said my name. Oh my God. It was like the coolest. It's the first time I've ever interacted oh. during a live stream. It was so cool. I've had that reaction too. And I'm a streamer. I have that reaction every time that I go into somebody's stream who like responds to me. I'm like, oh, I know how this works, but that's still really cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is so awesome. Yeah. Um, um, what was I going to say? But that's what I'm talking about for you, because you talk about your oh, community. Yeah. It sounds like peer support. It is peer support, 100%. Yeah. So there that's are... what you asked for a topic for you. That's the topic I would talk about. If I that's were really cool. That's really cool. It is written down right now. <laughs> and Woo! I also have, oh, no, it is deleted. I wrote down, uh, oh, here we go. The Zelda book about linking psychology to it. Yep. Watch Untangled. It's it tangled. It's not untangled. Parasocial oh, relationships. That would be a great topic. Yes, Mupalu, I agree. Video interaction it- helps a lot for me because I'm chronically ill and don't get a lot of face-to-face interaction otherwise. Ash venturing. Exactly. Exactly. See, that is like... Oh, it just makes me feel like right on. Like you're, you're using the tool for, I think, what it was intended yes. for. That and that's was like the idea is connecting bring people. people together. And if you have a chronic physical illness and you can't get a lot of face to face time, and then you found community here, uh, even doing something like this can help you feel so much less isolated and alone. It's amazing. It's amazing. Gosh, Yet another I Adam. That. I don't know that Scott can speak to this, but that is an interesting topic. Uh, I know Veterans Affairs is currently looking into long-term injuries and how that affects your mental health and if it's linked to addiction. Wow. Ash Venturing says, that's why I started using Mixer in the first place to find friends because becoming chronically ill has made me feel isolated. Ash Venturing, you are not alone. If you want more streamers like me who talk about this stuff, scroll down to uh, the link HWA and that will bring you to the rest of the team. And that's a bunch of people with long-term illnesses, visible and invisible, who talk about uh, their stuff and are open about it on stream. So be sure to check them out. Um, well, that is so great, dude. It's 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 really cool. It's it sick. So cool. it's Yo, so it's sick. sick. It's so sick. <laughs> That's a, that is a joke of this year. I'll be talk talk with my friend, and then out of the blue, we'll just do like a quick metal voice. Yo, know, how are you? <laughs> Work was pretty good, but man, I feel so tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Oh my gosh, here's like. The thing that's helped me so much with mental health, okay, so much, is to find people that are just as fucked up and weird as I am. I love it. If you, can, if you oh my god, just find that one person, even if it takes you a lifetime, you will find that one person where you can be your true self. Online community doesn't matter. Offline doesn't matter. Someone that I can just be the most fucked up with, and it's like so freeing. It's oh, so free. It's beautiful. Just to it's just to, yeah, that I think Add that's Add that to your TED freedom. talk right there. There you How go. How to be find someone who's as fucked up as I am. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. It, it means that you're not you're not alone in suffering, not alone in your weirdness. There's so many people on the planet. There's no way someone couldn't connect with you on a very deep level like that. There's no way. 
which is another great thing about the online space. Man, I got I got to get myself million. a TEDx talk. That's I don't know how to do it. I've pitched myself. I feel like they have to come and knock into you, but one day, one day. You would travel for it, right? I would, of course you, I would travel. Yeah, for you'd it. come Are to you Toronto. Are kidding me? I know. <laughs> it's not even like, man, there aren't there different there's like Idea City. I think that's another one. Do you do do you go to any conferences? Oh, I go to, yeah, well, so that was the conference I told you about on mental health and then all the PAXs and everything. Yeah, so. Did you speak at those? uh, Yeah, that was, that was my, yeah, that was my first conference that I went to and I was a speaker. Wait, the first time you spoke was at this conference? Yeah, the one in Toronto that I just went to. Oh, what? It was really cool. Now I'm pissed. Now I'm even more sad I didn't get to see you. Well, too bad. Now you know what you're missing out on, sir. Hey, oh. (laughs) I don't know. And you go classic Italian <laughs> and randomly yeah. in a sentence. Yeah, uh, it randomly into a sentence. A Bliffle Ain't Slick no was way. making fun of you before and talking about how you said apologies are, are bullshit. And they're like, ah, oh, coming from a Canadian, that's intense. So. Oh, yeah. yes, yes. It is. You are so right. As a Canadian, I still do not apologize for who I am. Hell Ooh. no. Ooh. Hell no. Ooh. Uh, moop. I did pitch myself to TED.com. It did not work. Don't worry about it. One day it'll happen. Don't worry about it. It will happen. It will happen. Hey, I got so lucky. Uh, I They reached out to... Oh, this is going to sound... Wow, that sounded pretentious. No, it oh, doesn't. My God. I, I, they reached out to you me. You had a so platform I didn't even, I didn't and they apply. found you. No, they you had but, a platform and they found you. True, but I did apply uh, two years in a row and they said no. Mm-hmm. And then I got discovered. Mm-hmm. So I know the rejection. Mm-hmm. I get rejected all the time. Yep. Those That's you just days. start you just start taking it like, okay, next. Okay, next. Okay, next. No, no, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. I get rejected all the time, man. Oh, hey, I'll I'll speak here. No, I'll speak at this conference. We're full. I'll speak here. You suck ass. Wait, wait. Oh, but, wait, wait, what? That's personal. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's oh, 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 yeah, oh, oh, oh. yeah. Who is this? <laughs> is this a lady that rejected Marie from Ted? Yeah. Is that you? Is that you? <laughs> <laughs> It was a dude, to be fair. It was a William something. I don't remember. I don't want to call him out. Poor guy. He meant well. He meant well in his word. Oh, my God. Imagine he was just the biggest fan and didn't want you to blow up. (laughs) (laughs) Get the hell out of here. Oh, so he's on this chat right now. Get the fuck out of here. That is so good. Yeah, he doesn't want you to get big. He wants you to keep it this, like, in this nice, cozy community. Then you're going to be traveling all over the world. You're not going to have time for us. Oh, yeah. No way. No way. See? No way, Jose. Moop, uh, send me send me an email to anxiety.maria at gmail with what you're thinking. It's an inquiry, not an inquiry. Okay. Yeah. Send that to me because I'm going to forget instantly. About Ted? Yeah. No, about no, no, no. He's talking about a spelling error. Moop loves correcting me. That's like his job in life is to correct me, which I appreciate. That's you say right. everybody needs a corrector. I just... If I could tease him for something, that would be it. Oh, awesome. He yeah. should be your copywriter. Yeah. I, yeah, he says I do. He's Yeah, that's my brain. Yep. Yeah, there you go. And I that's love you awesome. for it. That's awesome. Oh, uh, my gosh. Yeah. My goodness. All right, so we're going to round this out so that I, yeah, yes. so we can okay. all go to bed and stuff. Well, yeah, we'll go to bed. Although, hey, here's a question. After a stream, are you pretty wired, though? Depends. Sometimes, well, like. I have a lot to do. So, like, I upload all of this. I prepare the social media posts for the next day and everything. Uh, and then usually after that, I'm like, mm. But if I try to go right from a stream right to bed, I have to walk my dog. I have to do something in between to kind of bring me. Because if I go directly to right. bed, I'm just going to lay there like an asshole. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> just like, I'm an asshole. Yeah. Just like my, my – well, it's usually like, thanks, brain. It's cool. Let's think about what I did in twelfth grade. That wasn't the nicest thing in the world. Let's let's oh just go there. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yes. there's yeah. such a good meme of that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, um, come on, it'll come to me. Mm-mm. Yes, it is ten fifteen. Um, the brain is slowing. Low. Yeah, I call it. I turn into a pumpkin around ten thirty. Pumpkin. Yeah. Uh, but oh, well, it wasn't gonna be a question. Just a comment. I, like I can't believe. Do you do yoga nine? Like, what's your nine to five job? My nine to five, I'm a project manager. Wow. Yes, I'm a project manager slash editor. That's the full title. For uh, like what? For kind a medical, of uh, for a, a medical publishing company. Wow. Oh, so you do have that research background? D- yeah, I was not making it up. I know. <laughs> uh, 
even if hey no even if you said like i'm a researcher it wouldn't like i still took it as that's amazing because maybe what you do during the day is simply do research on your own yeah well no that's still being a researcher yeah it's a very broad term no i get it i'm just teasing you it's a yeah but you do this and for for another organization and then you do this yes and then you go to conferences and speak yeah and then you set up your social media and then you Uh email and respond to email people Uh like mook just now Uh Uh do you guys Uh know you just are got the willy wonka gold ticket with this chick (laughs) That's amazing. I do a lot. And then and then you write I'm also writing a book. <laughs> You're right. Oh, who's writing a book? I am. <laughs> You're writing a book? Yeah. Does your husband ever see? <laughs> I no, we do. We make like yeah, it's we're working on nights. it. Next week I'm away. So like it happens. I do go away and I shut down and everything. That's very sweet. You guys are very sweet. I usually don't wow. do it all at once. You make it sound like I do everything at the same exact second, but I don't. I well, don't. you you go to work every day, don't you? Right. No, I do go to work every day. And then, and a, then you stream two times a week? Three times. Come on! But I'm a project manager. This is how my brain works. I'm able to compartmentalize 40,000 things at once and put them in slots in my head so that I know oh. which one to reach for when I need it. I'm not saying it's not easy, and if I had my pick, would I stop my 9 to 5 and just do this full time? 110%, but that's not in the cards right now, so that's not what we're doing. We know what we're doing. All right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, this was freaking awesome. Yeah. This is so great. This is uh, sick. I, <laughs> <laughs> I might to I might keep playing a bit of uh Zelda before bed then. Um, but just thank you so much oh my gosh. for inviting thank me you. on your stream. Um, the business you've created, let, we'll call it, let's call it a business. It's a business. You can call B- it a business. The business you've created is amazing. <laughs> to to all of the people watching, man, you guys, uh, I'm sure Marie tells you this all the time, but you all kick ass. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. Good, 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 good. Um, for those watching too, just um hmm. i always like to give a final message be the light no that's your hashtag yeah but that's what i usually ask my guests to say don't forget to and then the guest usually finishes yeah well i'm not your average guest there honey (laughs) (laughs) so you know what's really interesting probably for the viewers to realize and we've both realized this too is how much over the past two hours how comfortable much more comfortable you get as time moves forward oh yeah that's really why cool. i like the longer interviews but they don't always yeah. happen yeah it depends on the guest yes uh, next question please yeah right uh-huh, uh-huh. um yes mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-huh. so okay everyone be the light stay awesome marie thank you so so much you are so rad everybody have a wonderful night i'm going to host somebody right after this so stick around for that and don't forget to be the light. Mwah! Thank you so much, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.